Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming clear from your side. Uh, please invite your friends and share the link of uh, YouTube with your friends and Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, today, our topic is about the resurrection of Jesus and uh, the death of Muhammad. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Jesus as a Christian. We are going to talk about Muhammad, who, what, uh, like what he confirmed to us about Jesus. Uh, today is the Easter for those who celebrate the Easter based on the Western calendar. However, for me, I believe that the uh, Eastern calendar is the accurate date for the Easter. And the reason for that there is a miracle happen every year uh, where uh, uh, light or fire come from the empty tomb of our Lord, which is based in the Eastern uh, calendar. Uh, the Muslims, they have tons of articles speaking about the uh, death of Jesus. So we will discuss what the Muslims believe about Jesus and we will try to accomplish an idea about what this religion speaking of please invite your friends uh, there is not many people here yet I did not post my broadcast everywhere as usual yet uh, but I hope you guys you will do and we'll bring more people here so we can learn the truth and the truth will set you free uh, according to Islam, Jesus was never crucified. But yet, Jesus somehow was resurrected. Islam, as usual, is not a religion of... Uh, uh, confirming anything it is a religion of let us say uh, it's like uh, Islam is like a yellow pages of somebody have ideas he took a notes and he put them in a book and that is supposedly later became a holy book for the Abdul but if you read uh, the book of Muhammad you will not learn anything I mean there is nothing there and the reason there is nothing there because the one who he himself is teaching you he is a thief and he do not know what he is talking about. You know, when you are a thief and you have no knowledge, then you cannot give details because details will expose you. As long as I don't have details or you don't ask me about details, there is no way to know who I am. As an example, I can, I can claim right now uh, that I am an engineer. Okay. But if you start asking me about engineering, you will notice that this guy, he have no idea what he's talking about. So the details is what make people get exposed to be uh, real or false. And always Muhammad, he have a lack of details. Actually, he have no details at all. If there is any Muslim here listening, Feel free to call me anytime during my podcast. And let me know if really we are wrong in anything we are going to say. According to Muhammad, <coughs> uh, the story of Jesus located in the Quran in one verse one verse and that verse says nothing absolutely nothing and you ask yourself someone in the size of the name of Jesus and the Quran made a chapter it's called the chapter of Ali Umran a chapter just by the name of the mother of Jesus yet the crucifixion of Jesus 
mentioned in one small verse and it's very confusing verse with no details this is the verse about Jesus if you count the words in it you will find they are like 30 40 words not even maybe uh, maybe no less as it, uh, you know like it's like uh, uh, you know seven eight words of a line for you know it's like mm, hardly it's 35 words and what the verse is saying is nothing this is the only chapter in the Quran to speak about Jesus chapter 4 verse number 157 when it's come to the crucifixion but it teach nothing it says nothing it give nothing the question why you know uh, we mentioned to you many times before how Allah, the God of Islam, He have time to tell us silly, stupid stories. As an example, there are seven guys uh, who run away and they hide in the cave. And there is dog. He open his arms, and uh, they they flip their back to the right, flip their back to the left, uh, and then they uh, after three hundred years, ten three hundred ten years something, they woke up and they found themselves in different centuries. And the coins they change. I mean, what we learn from this story and what the benefit of the story. Or about Suleiman who walk in the valley of ants. By the way, I saw the valley of ants because we are in the Middle East, we have a lot of ants. And that's very well known. If you don't believe me, you can go right now and take air, uh, ant airline. Because we have, if you're going to go to the uh, valley of ants, uh, uh, the Ant Valley have an is, is an independent state right now. It registered in the United Nation. They have a flag. It's called the flag of ants. So Suleiman, he took a flying carpet. He fly to the Valley of Ants, and then he land there, and he walk with his army. And his army contained genie, human, human being, and uh, uh, birds, chickens, and ducks. Quark, quark. Silly, stupid stories, there is no benefit of it, and teach us nothing, except it's a fiction story. What is the benefit of this story? If we take it from the Quran or we add it to the Quran, nothing will change. It's just fiction story. Muhammad, he took it from the legions of the Jews. Then when we come to see what happened to Jesus, we find no answer. This prophet, the prophet of the Abdur, he have time to tell us that God, he will make lawful for you to if your cousin and to if the cousin of the cousin and to if the neighbor and to if the neighbor of the neighbor and to if your uh, uh, your cousin from your mother and to if the, the cousin of your cousin from your uh, uncle and to if your wife, I mean, even he have a verse, it's about, it's lawful for you to if your wife. I mean, she is his wife already. It is lawful for you that women they offer themselves to if them. Yeah, there's verses there. But when it's come to Jesus, there's nothing. This is the prophet of God. Let us read together what Muhammad he said about the crucifixion of Jesus and let us see how silly this religion is. Please don't forget to invite your friends. I know today is Saturday, most of people they are out going with their friends. But my friend is the Messiah. And he is always with me, so I am not alone. And I think he is the best friend for all of us. And as you see, even a cult like Muhammad cult, he could not deny. You see, sometimes people they say to me, "What do you think about the Book of Satan, uh, which is the Quran?" They don't say the Book of Satan; they say the Quran. I say, even in the Quran. God, He show the truth. How? You know, Quran is a book made by a, a devilish man. Uh, let us say, actually, it's not even made by him. I mean, he is a copy and copying others. But at the end of the day, he is the one supposedly delivered it to us. But even in the book of the devil, even the devil himself, if you go and see in the Bible, you will see that the, 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 Satan, he says to Jesus, if you are the son of God, he acknowledge that God has a son. 
if you are the son of God throw yourself so Satan himself he knew Satan himself he acknowledged and Satan even Satan he cannot deny and he confirm what we believe in and this is exactly today what we will see with the story of Muhammad <laughs> They said, read carefully with me, please. They said, who is the one they said? Supposedly, the Jews. You know, you know like when people read uh, something, they don't go really in the deep details. Most of people, they just like, okay, they say it and we go. No, let us stop here before we continue. They said, who? The Jews. Okay. So take a note, take a note. The Jews, they said, we killed Jesus. It is not the Christian saying, we, you know, uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, sorry, uh, the Jews killed Jesus. It is the one who committed the crime, admitting his a crime. You see, in the world of, a, uh, of a crimes and murder, if you commit a crime and you uh, admit that's it there is no need for even a court or what they need to do now is to give uh, the final judgment that's it there's no trial the trial is over the guy he admitted that he committed the crime so the jews they said we killed jesus the first question we should say or ask why the jews they said we killed jesus if they did not Muhammad explained to us why the Jews they said that in fact Muhammad claimed that the Jews they killed Jesus but the fact that no, the, 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 the fact it's not him it is the fake Jesus the cloned one so this verse confirm that the messenger of Allah which the Jews say that they killed him Allah says to them, but they killed him not, nor crucified him. So there was no killing, no crucifixion at all. But so it was made to appear to them. So what happened, it was a fake person who is, or who Allah made him look like Jesus, according to the Muslim interpretation. And the Jews they crucified this Jesus here we need to stop and see how silly this statement is you know if somebody says to me that Jesus was a crucified as a look but not as a person and the one who appeared in his place in the look someone his name is whatever and then I ask him, okay, who is the one who made this happen? He said to me, Allah. All right. So let us take a note. Let us take a note, please. Allah. Oh, we are typing in Arabic. Hold on. Remember, now we are trying to, to recognize Allah according to Muslims, not according to us. How and what Muslims they say about Allah and the Quran itself is speaking about Allah right now So what the Quran tell us about Allah by this by confirming this Allah play games The Jews they killed Jesus however Allah Play the game of deception fooling them Placing someone instead of Jesus. Now, by doing this game or playing this game of a cloning, and the purpose is to deceive the Jews. Did Allah deceive the Jews really? Any Muslim can tell us? Did Allah really deceive the Jews? Muslims 
did he deceive the Jews when he cloned someone like Jesus? Who is the Muslim? Want to give me an answer? Are you telling me there's today there is no Muslim in the text? I don't believe it. They are there. Already we have uh, uh, some unlikes or dislike in the in the YouTube. Where is the where is the Abdul? <coughs> Uh, somebody asking me, do you believe Muhammad he saw Jibreel? My friend Muhammad, he never saw anyone. He never even have sex with his wives. The hadith says he imagined himself having sex with his wife. So you can imagine what he imagined. If somebody, even his sex, have no witnesses, we find that his sex was alone. He imagined himself having sex with his wife, which means there's no women there. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So when Allah... He played the game of deception and he deceived the Jews, making them believe that they killed Jesus. What Allah exactly accomplished? This is what I want to know. What is exactly, uh, uh, I mean, the plan? Any Muslim can tell us what the plan? What the purpose of this? Who is a Muslim is willing to call us to our number, which is sorry, our name in Skype, which is DBTV. But deceiver, okay, he, you know, he mentioned in the Quran, this is why I have my book, it's called The Deception of Allah, the first and the second book, speaking of both of them about the deception of Allah, as you know. But this is now all the news. Allah, by deceiving the Jews, deceiving is the tool. Uh, deception is not the purpose should be something else there is a plan what is what is next so when Allah he deceived the Jews and he made them kill someone else what was the purpose if there is any Muslim in the bushes <clears throat> would like to explain to us this amazing you know statement what was the purpose of this deception what 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 Allah accomplish I'm waiting for somebody to call me because I don't want to give the answer from myself I want to I want you to hear the other side of the story so maybe the Muslims you know can have their voice heard too because maybe Christian Prince he is not being fair maybe Christian Prince is giving his own thoughts you know but it's not what it is or what he's saying who is the Muslim want to call us <laughs> You see, we are not the same as the Dean Show. Call us at our phone number, but they never receive a phone call because they don't allow phone calls. I have my uh, uh, calling uh, uh, calls to the Dean Show many time, and it's recorded. It's in it's in YouTube. How they refuse to give me to get let me go through because nobody go through. Not only me, by the way. I think all the Muslims don't go through. You will see this guy. What his name? Uh, you uh, use this yeah, use use I don't know what uh, I forgot his name the blonde guy uh, yes brother you have a question but have you ever heard of a TV station receiving phone calls by a cell phone in the same time nobody hear the voice because nobody is calling even the phone did not ring the pre set up a program and they send themselves letters a christian he sent me why islam hate the the the, the, the christians the christian he sent you a letter show us where is the letter who is the one who sent the letter not a single caller we don't do that we are live here actually i don't even prepare for a topic i today is is a special day for the christians celebrating the the western calendar i said let's talk about this topic then I do not need to prepare. So I want to hear a Muslim <clears throat> who claim to have knowledge to give us an answer. But because there is no Muslim here giving answers, we have to continue. The purpose of this, according to Muslims, is to save Jesus. I mean, hello, <laughs> to save Jesus. <laughs> that is the most stupid reason to say why. Because according to the Muslim stories, Allah resurrected, sorry, he took Jesus to heaven before the Jews came to his house. So there is no need for the cloning. 
So the first reason the Muslim they gave us it failed <clears throat> because Jesus was out already, regardless if he clone or not. Look what the what the Muslim they say in their story. Uh, let me use my art. You know, you know, you know, I am an artist since I was a child, and because so he used to learn from me. Yeah, this is a true story, can be found in Sahir Bukhari about Christian Prince being an artist. So if we draw for you some some lines here for you, let us say there was a twelve men, twelve men in this room. Hmm? Now those twelve men, I'm not going to draw everybody. The Jews is coming and they are inside the room. Allah, he cloned someone look like Jesus. But by doing that, now we have two Jesus <laughs> in the room. We have Jesus number one plus Jesus number two. In the same room, the beach. So cloning would not make any difference because now they will arrest them both. <laughs> if you make twelve people look like Jesus, they will still arrest them all <laughs> because they are coming after Jesus, and they will notice there is twelve of them. So they will be like, wow, how this happened? However, they will arrest them all and take them to jail. And then they will need to find out who is the one, the real Jesus. So when he cloned the first Jesus, and now we have the second Jesus, which means Jesus 1 plus Jesus 2, that alone is not enough. According to the story, Allah, he took Jesus to heaven, Jesus number 1, to heaven, and he left Jesus number two in the room. The Jews, they came and they arrested Jesus number two. So what the reason for a cloning? Jesus already is safe, is escape. <laughs> I never ask a Muslim a question about the reason of doing this, except he said to me to save Jesus. Brother to save Jesus, he Allah he will not his prophet to be humiliated by the Jews. My brother, my brother, listen carefully. Jesus already saved. Based in your story, not my story. Based in your story, already Jesus in heaven. So what the purpose of the cloning? No purpose. Stupidity. Nobody wanna use his brain. You know, it looked like if a Muslim he used his brain, he got hurt. It hurt. What do you mean to save Jesus? Really, Jesus is left up to heaven, supposedly. So the cloning do no nothing. Now, based on this, as as long the cloning was not to save Jesus, so what the cloning did? The cloning deceived the Jews. Is that right? No. The Jews, they were not deceived by this stupid story. Why? At the end of the day, the Jews don't believe in Jesus. So Jesus, it was him. Jesus was not him for the Jews. Okay, we got rid of the guy. We will not see him. He's gone, according to the Muslim story. Remember, I'm talking about, because now the true Jesus is in the sky. So the Jews, they accomplished the mission. You know what I mean? So the Jews, nothing happened to them. Like he did not save Jesus, and Jesus continued the mission, which is supposedly uh, to preach the word of Allah. No. The Muslim Jesus is a coward, and his God is a coward. Both of them, they run away. Let us hide. The Jews is coming. So Allah, he gave a phone, a WhatsApp to Isa. Hey, Isa. Uh, Isa, get your balloon ready, okay? Get your balloon ready, and we are. I'm going to come to resurrect you or take you to heaven, 
and I'm going to take you by the elevator and uh, don't worry be happy you they will not catch you okay Allah where are we going to go do you want to move me to different city no we will run me and you to the sky they cannot reach out to us there because the Jews they have connection what Allah he ran with his Isa to the sky that's mean the Jews they accomplished their mission now the deception based on this did not happen to the Jews because the Jews they were not bother or what they know that they killed Jesus and they don't they will not see him anymore and they did not see him anymore according to the Quran and according to Muhammad's stories so who is going to be affected by the story that Allah he made someone look like Jesus appear to the Jews to be Jesus who is the one is going to be affected by this it is the Christians because based on this story the Christians believe in the crucifixion of Jesus because Allah the deceiver made Jesus appear in the cross the Muslims the madness of Muhammadan they say to you Jesus did not die in friend Jesus had took up to heaven hold on hold on don't blame me for believing that Jesus he was on the cross it was your stupid Allah who made me believe in this and the verse in the front of your eyes if Allah did not make someone look like Jesus appear in the cross as Jesus crucified as Jesus killed as Jesus bleed as Jesus die as Jesus then we will not believe that it was Jesus so you smart Muslims you blame the Christians for believing that this is was Jesus when it is Allah who made us believe this is Jesus who can be a better cloner than Allah hmm? is that a Halloween game is that a horror movie we put someone in the cross but it is the fake one and we make you believe it is the real one and he look exactly the same he have the same voice he have the same eyes he have the same hair he have the same body even his mother she stood in the front of him she did not even notice that this is not his son huh I mean look how the cloning is perfect even the mother of Jesus she did not notice that this is not Jesus so if you ask the mother of Jesus, did you see your son was a crucified? She would say yes. So the God of Islam, even he deceived Mary. Why you deceive Mary, Allah? I thought Mary for you is a good woman. Hmm? Why Allah he deceived Mary? Why Allah deceived everybody? Why Allah deceived more than three billion Christians? Made them believe that Jesus was a crucified, but in fact, according to Islam, he was not. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim who would like to call us? <clears throat> if you are a Muslim and you like to call, feel free, my friend. I'm not here to judge you. I am here to judge the teaching of the Quran. You are a Muslim. You are a victim. Cool. Maybe you, maybe you are wrong. Maybe you are right. But as you see here, this phrase in the Quran or this statement in the Quran is a big problem for Muslims, not for us. You just admitted that we are Christians because of Allah. <clears throat> Literally. Christianity does not exist if there is no crucifixion. You know the crucifixion of Jesus is one of the major uh, belief in Jesus you take it out you took a lot you know like almost we have nothing left all right let me answer hello 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 my friend I'm calling from India from India you are welcome I love Indian people how you wanna what do you want to say to us uh, yesterday in the debate, yeah, with that guy Fawad. Yes. <clears throat> uh, you, in the last point you told uh, uh, about uh, 
that uh, Adam was uh, created in heaven and art before he, uh, he was created before art and heaven was created. Mm. I didn't get a point, man. Actually, what was the point? <coughs> what was the point? <laughs> Means uh, he he also accepted the point, no? That uh, yes, Adam was created uh, even before. Uh, the art and the heaven uh, the point of me saying that or the point of this creation <clears throat> yeah, this creation. So yeah. what was the you, you know let us let us let us uh, you know uh, <clears throat> please forgive me we have a topic we don't want to change the topic now to answer about that we can we can finish this one and then we can go to your uh, question but just to give you a, f a fast uh, 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 answer what is the purpose of adam in islam there's no purpose <laughs> what is the purpose of Adam and Eve? What the purpose of you and me? What the purpose? The purpose of all of this, according to Muslims, that Allah created everything for the sake of Muhammad. So the story is all of it is fabrication, just to sweet, to fit with someone whose name is Muhammad. We will give you. I will give you more details after we finish this topic. And please, anyone want to call? Thank you for calling, my friend. Anyone want to call? Please call us if you have a question about the topic for now. Or if you are a Muslim who want to debate me about a topic, uh, don't change the topic. We want to finish it. When Allah, he said supposedly, and the one is talking here is Allah, that he is the one who cloned someone look like Jesus, crucifying someone else. By doing that, he did two mistakes. Allah, he made two mistakes. <clears throat> who want to give me the the first mistake in the text? Let us see. Who of you is special? Uh, uh, he have a special intelligence. What is the first mistake? I have a white screen in the screen, so we can write down the mistakes, one after one. What is the first mistake Allah, he did? in this story who knows two important mistakes we, we learn he deceived people we learn he is a deceiver but there is there is now a result of the deception this is the mistake I want to talk about deceiving is not the mistake uh, uh as a purpose or let us say as the plan supposedly allah made a plan right so the plan is to save jesus but but the plan did not work because saving jesus caused the people what to believe in jesus as god if i am a muslim and you and you tell me that there is a there is a person his name is Jesus everybody die except him he's alive this is number one mistake Jesus is alive okay I need to ask myself why Jesus is alive why everybody is dead Muhammad is dead Abraham is dead, Moses is dead, everybody is dead except Jesus. Number two, the Christian Bible is it true? You will see some Abdul trying to debate us about Jesus was not crucified, but the fact the Quran, this verse, confirm. That the Bible is it true? Why? Because this story confirms what is written in the Bible that the apostles of Jesus and the people they witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus. So the Bible did not lie and it's not corrupt. Those two facts are in the Bible. <clears throat> Jesus is alive, the Bible is it true. Because when the Bible says that Jesus was crucified, those who wrote the Bible, they are witnessing for what they saw. 
and the true witness is the one who say what he saw correct the witnesses they are not God they don't know that this God playing games what they know that someone look exactly like Jesus in the cross of Jesus and he is Jesus so they wrote in the Bible that this is true and the Quran confirmed that the Bible story about the crucifixion of Jesus is a true what the Quran confirmed to that those who wrote the Bible they are decent what the Bible what the Quran confirmed to that the Christians they became a Christians believing in the crucifixion of Jesus because <clears throat> of the stupid Allah <clears throat> if not Allah Allah the text became so big here let us make it smaller okay hold on uh, Allah made us a Christians made us let us make it so more our text Allah made us Christians this is what the Quran is saying so what is my fault When the Christian believe that Jesus was a crucified, that is the fault of the stupid God of Islam. And the Quran confirmed that. Because if Allah did not make the cloning, there is no Christian in the top of this earth would believe that Jesus was a crucified. If there is no one in the cross look exactly like Jesus, none of us will believe that Jesus was a crucified. So this is the fault of who? The fault of the stupid God of Islam who his plan was to save Jesus but he failed he did not save Jesus he did not save him because saving Jesus as a person is not important supposedly from saving the mission of Jesus what is the mission of God why Allah he sent Jesus to this earth according to the Muslims to save us He's a prophet of Allah. So now, by making Christians believe that he is God, adding one more reason for them to believe he is God. You see, the Quran confirmed that Jesus, he can resurrect people from death. Jesus, he can make the blind see. Jesus, he can tell you what you hide. Jesus, he can do all kinds of miracles, you, you name it. Not only that, Jesus, he can create from the mud the bird. I mean, what's wrong with this Jesus? Everything God can do, he can do. Obviously, there is something wrong with him. This is not good. Because look like Jesus is a clone of Allah according to Islam. Because Allah, how he created Adam? How Allah created Adam? He breathed into Adam. He made a fashion of a, a, a status of a clay. And he breathed into him. And then Adam became Adam. <clears throat> this is how Jesus created the mud. Uh, the, the bird from the mud so why in this chapter chapter 3 verse number 40, 49 it says the following read carefully with me that Isa was supposed to this is Jesus the messenger of, uh, of uh, uh, Allah to Israel hmm? here we have another problem by the way when he say he is the messenger of Israel because if Isa is the messenger of all, uh, of Israel, why his book is written? The name of his book is in a Greek language. Muslims have no answer, because you are using the word Injil. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. So the Muslim they will say to you, okay, don't make a big noise about it. It says there that this is a sign from Allah anyway. That will not make a difference because look with me what it says. In that I make for you, I. 
make for you out of the clay, as it were, the figure of a bird. And I breathe into it. Who is the one is breathing? Who is the one is breathing, Muslims? That is Jesus. From the breath of Jesus, life come. From the breath of Jesus, life is born. You have just a mud. And Jesus did not make a mud and say, oh, Allah, please make the mud come back or come alive or make it a bird. No, he breathed. This is exactly supposed to what the Quran says about Allah, how he created Adam. He made the fashion of a clay. And then that the clay, Allah, he breathed into it. And it become Adam. That is your religion. <clears throat> Uh, the Quran confirmed many times how Allah He created the uh, Adam <clears throat> that He created you from mud. But how He created him from mud? Simply, He breathed into the mud after He fashioned Ad uh, Adam uh, and He made him a living a human being. This is what the Quran confirm all over uh, the Quran. So why, why Jesus he can do what nobody can do, and why he can do what Allah can do, according to Muslims. You see, if I go right now in the front of uh, in the in the Quran. You will see that one of the reasons that uh, uh, Adam, uh, sorry, Shaitan, he rejected uh, to bow down to Adam, according to Islam, is that he was created from mud. And here we have a funny story that Allah is ordering everybody, including the Shaitan, including the angels, to bow down to Adam. And Shaitan, he refused to bow down to Adam. And he says to him, you made me from fire. You made him from mud. Why well, I want to bow down to him? And why I want to bow down to him anyway? He's right. That story is another stupid story. Muhammad, he came with that Adam. And actually, he took it from the Sabian. This is a Sabian story. Adam uh, uh, was accused by the angels that he is going to do mischief men, so Allah punished him. Uh, you see, all, all those verses, chapter 17, verse number 61, uh, you know, speaking about this story. Uh, chapter 23, verse number 12, it says the same, that Allah, he created Adam from a, a clay, you know. So Jesus and Allah, they can do the same thing. If I am exist in the time of Jesus, the Muslim, not Jesus, the, 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 the Christ, you know, as we know him. And somebody tell me that there is a person, he makes somebody or he make a clay as a living bird. That is not a miracle. That's astonishing. This is God. This is not something will make me believe that he is a prophet. I mean, why you give him the power of a creation? Make him the okay, Jesus, he can heal the leper. Okay, amazing, wonderful. Jesus, he can make the blind see. That's it, it's enough. He put his hand on the head of somebody or the eyes of somebody, and he have eyes again. You do not need to give him the power of uh, making creating life that is dangerous because now we have two people or two persons both they are capable of doing the same thing Allah and Jesus the Muslim they will say to you well this is done by the leave of Allah it doesn't make any difference my friend as you see Jesus have the ability so you want to tell me Allah gave him the ability this is not true he have it. How you can share ability of a creation if this is your own ability? Can a creation ability be shared? 
No. No. You're a prophet. You ask me to do something if I am God, and then I do it for you. It's not you who do it. Here you will see it says, and I heal those who they are born blind. He didn't say and Allah he, he, he healed them. And I quicken the dead. Do you see it, Muslim? And I quicken the dead. So Jesus, it was not enough for him that he can create it from the mother bird. The madness continue of Islam. That this Jesus, he is no one, he is just a prophet, but he can create from the mother bird and he can quicken the dead. Why all those miracles around Jesus? Yesterday, two days ago, we have a guy, Abdul, he said to us, uh, in the time of Jesus, uh, science was advanced. What are you talking about, stupid Abdul? The time of Jesus, 600 years before Muhammad, not 600 years after Muhammad. So, science should be advanced in the time of Muhammad more. Imagine now and 600 years from now. Which science should be advanced? And as you see, Jesus did not use medicine. What say? What medicine? Today, today in the year 2018, have you ever heard of somebody he put some mud in your eyes and you can see right away if you are blind? Have you ever heard of somebody he cooking the dead? Have you ever heard of somebody he can make you heal by, by touching him? Have you ever heard of somebody? Uh, 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 you know, I mean, what what those who are to what medicine? But because they could not find an excuse for their prophet when their prophet was busy talking about the power of his penis, that his penis had the power of 40 men, Jesus was a resurrect, resurrecting dead people. When Muhammad having sex with a child, Jesus was healing the blind. While Muhammad was bragging about how many you know underwear he stole and how many women he, ro he raped, Jesus was healing women and men and children. And he must them ask himself, why nobody have all those miracles together? Name for me one in your religion, Muslims, has all those. You see, they, they say to you that Jesus, because of science, was advanced. What science was advanced? The Roman science was advanced. It was a normal science that according according to a scientist that the Egyptian who exist long before the Roman their their medicine a lot advanced from the Roman. So why Moses was not giving those miracles in the Quran? You know what I mean? This is what his uh, science is to say that the Egyptian their science their, their medicine was amazing. This is why until now you open a tomb of a pharaoh you find the guy he is buried there for a couple of thousand of years and almost he still look the same so why moses was not given the same science or same miracles so if you ask me if i am now a person who is not a christian yet and i am a muslim god forbid and I read this, I will accept Jesus as my savior because you just confirmed to me that this person, he can do what Allah cannot do. You see here they say that all of those things Jesus, he did by Allah leave. But the fact we can prove easy that this is false statement made by Muhammad. I can say right now that all the miracles Jesus, Jesus did, uh, he did by my uh, leave. What? Well, who are you? I can make a statement. I mean, talk is cheap. Correct? Talk is cheap. If Allah, he can do miracles, then why he could not do any for Muhammad? The Quran confirmed. You see the Muslims, they have in the Hadith tons of funny stories. Muhammad speaking to the goat. Muhammad, the, the camel crying for the, uh, the, uh, the camel crying for Muhammad. Uh, uh, the tree, uh, 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 like a, a creep. The, have you ever of walk, heard of walking trees? Yes, in the Hadith you will find it. Muhammad, he wanted to do poo, poo and the trees came around him and they covered him in the shade. And the tree convert to Islam and say Shahada. All those stories, we cannot find them in the Quran. 
Why Allah did not mention them? Because those stories are fabricated long after Muhammad. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad has had zero miracles. In chapter 17, verse number 59, it says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ Nothing made us to be refrained or to refrain from sending miracles except that former generations, they accused them to be a lie. <clears throat> Do you see it? The Quran confirmed that Muhammad have zero miracles. He refrained. Allah, he refrained. But why Muhammad, he came with this statement? This is not Allah talking. There's no Allah. It is Muhammad who made this verse. He want to explain why his God is in this ability. He cannot make miracles. Why Muhammad, you do not have miracles? Uh, because Allah, he have a strike. If you go to France, they have a strike every two days. And look like Allah is in a strike always. So because former generation, my friend, they did not believe in the miracle of Allah. So Allah now in strike. This is false. Former generation, you liar. They believe in the miracles. As you see, we believe in the miracles of Jesus. Don't we? More than half of the population of the earth today believe in the miracle of Jesus. We are the biggest faith in this earth. So what do you mean former generation do not believe? And here he mentioned the story of a funny, stupid a miracle. Allah, he made a she-camel come out of a rock and the she-camel was a Britnet with the 10 year, 10 month old she camel. I mean, all prophets before Muhammad, they were able to do miracle. Even the prophet who came before him, he made the rock a camel and the, the rock became a camel or gave birth to a camel. And then that, that, uh, and that uh, camel is a Britnet with 10 month old she camel. But Muhammad don't have any. He, Allah, he refrained. That's it. Don't talk about it. Garbage in, garbage out. It is an excuse for a false prophet who cannot have a miracle. People around him, they keep saying to him, why your God don't send you a miracle? So he have to give them an answer. Ah, oh, he refrained. Allah, he refrained. What we can do? I mean, if Allah refrained, what you can do about it? When Allah, he stopped the refraining method, we will let you know. So now what we confirm from this, that the God of Islam is in disability. When Allah, he says in the Quran, according to the Quran, Aka Muhammad, which means Allah and Muhammad is one, that all those miracles was done to Jesus by uh, Allah or by the leave of Allah that's a lie by the leave of Allah there's no proof of it <clears throat> anyone can say by the okay Christian Prince uh, the education you have about Islam I give it to you by my leave who is the one saying that? Shabir Ali. But Shabir Ali did not know even how to read two Arabic words. Anyone can say all of this done by, you know, uh, somebody can make a book and says that all the miracle of Jesus was given to him by the leaf of Buddha. What? Yes, the Buddha, Buddha, he gave him the miracle. You can make any claim you want. But what is confirmed here, that Jesus can do the following, Abdul. Jesus can create from the mud 
a figure of a bird and he breathed into it, which means he is the source of life. All right. Hello? Hello, CP. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. <clears throat> Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, my question is related to the topic. Um, you know, it seems like the the Quran actually affirms, you know, the miracle birth, the miracles, the word, the spirit, the uh, the ascension, all that. What is the purpose of denying the crucifixion? Like, what difference would it make if there was a crucifixion and resurrection as opposed to just an ascension? Well, Muhammad, you know, he was following uh, a Christian cult. That cult believed that because Jesus, but he did not follow them in the full. He took from them that statement. This cult believe that Jesus, because he is the son of God, there is no way that this is him in the cross and he was suffering. So they believe that it must be, it is like appearance of Jesus. It's like a philosophy thing. It was the appearance of the body of Jesus, but the real person as Jesus, the son of God, is not in the cross. This is just the flesh. So those people, they believe it is the flesh of Jesus, not a clone. It is the flesh, but it's just a flesh. Flesh is suffering, but this is not Jesus. Muhammad, he copied from them that statement. He thought it's mean what he said here, that it was a clone. So he took it and he adopted. And this is, was, uh, uh, you know, the, the, let us say, the lifestyle of Muhammad to adopt stories run around. Some people, they say, that there is a seven Christians they sleep in the cave, but it was a fiction story. Muhammad he adopted the story. Some people they say that there is a uh, there is a certain man he used to have a flying carpet. Muhammad he adopted the story. He don't investigate read the story. He take it. He put it in his book. As long he know that those people they take it serious or somehow serious, and some naive people they believe in it. So he adopt the story. He don't he don't mind. Muhammad is a, like a person. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard uh, of, of uh, somebody, he is a, uh, you know, like a salesman. You know, a salesman, when he talks to you, he tries to know what you are trying to buy. What do you want to buy? How much money you want to spend? And based on that, he changed the description of the product. If you are a person who is a student and you want to buy a car, he will not tell you that this, this car is going to cost you a lot of money for maintenance. This car, the, the parts of it are expensive. He will tell you this car is fantastic, will not break, etc. And it is very easy to maintain. If you are a rich man, he will offer you a warranty. Don't worry about the expensive part. Yes, it's expensive, but you know what? Who cares? We will offer you a warranty. You have money. So the deal change and the name, the titles and the description change. Muhammad always he do the same. When he speak to the Christians, he talk to them as if he's a Christian. He was speaking to some of those who believe in this, but they don't believe exactly as he believe. He got it wrong. Same as when he speak to the Jews, the Jews they don't believe as he believe because he got it wrong. Same as when he spoke to the Sabian. So Muhammad was a Jew. He was a Christian. He was a Sabian. He was a, 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 a pagan. Uh, it depends. He is talking to who in the front of who. When he speak to you, if you are a Jew, he's a Jew. If you are a Christian, he's a Christian. If you are an atheist, he's an atheist. If you are a person who worship the three daughters of Allah, Manat and Allah al Uzza, he bow down to them and he pray to them, as we know in the satanic verses. So Muhammad is like a, a lizard from those who change their color. Depend what is the background rock is. So if the background is brown, he's brown. If it's white, he's white. If it's red, it's, he's red. He don't have a color. He is a salesman. So all the purpose of this is how I can make them believe. Muhammad was not uh, saying here, uh, again, I am against the Christians and the Christians are wrong. You see here, Muhammad is speaking against the Jews. He is not saying the Christians believe, you know. Here he is saying the Jews they said we killed Jesus. So he was trying actually to adopt himself in this moment as somebody correcting the Jew, taking the side of those who they are supposedly Christians, who they believe that it was a figure 
of Jesus, not Jesus, which means it was a flesh suffering, but the Messiah, the Word of God, was already in heaven. He took it, he adopted, and because there is no explanation, because maybe even Muhammad, he uh, he took it as they, they, they believe, but because here there is no explanation except the Muslim interpretation, so we do not know. Did he believe in it as it is? Those false Christians or cult a Christian cult, they believe in it. You know, for me, I say they are cult, even though they are, uh, they believe that Jesus is uh, is a, a crucified and resurrected. But you should not say it is not his flesh, or you should not say, oh, it was just a flesh, and Jesus already is up in heaven, because this flesh is the flesh of Jesus anyway. So it was a wrong philosophy. Muhammad he adopted. Either by taking the story literally or by having his own understanding of what they believe. I hope I answered you. Yeah, it's actually it's actually very interesting. Um um do you I mean I think you have a very interesting theory on that because this could be this verse could have been revealed at a time where uh, Muhammad had gone through many wars with Jews and maybe he was trying to recruit some Christian allies. Right, I mean, is there a way to know um, the order of the ayat in the Quran? Like, how would we know when what was revealed and in what? You order? can go. You can search in Google for something that's called uh, Quran by the order of revelation. However, uh, that that order not necessarily to be accurate because this is written long after. We do not know, but this is what the Muslims believe that this is the order. But I don't trust any of this. I believe actually th there is many uh, uh, chapters in the Quran. Uh, they are added later. You know, they are not even from the uh, Quran. Uh, there is addition, but we do not. We cannot. We cannot confirm anything because nobody uh, knows uh, anything about Islam. You see, there is there is no uh, continue uh, like uh, Islam is disconnected religion since Muhammad. To the time the Muslims they have a book, it's called the Quran. There's about 300 years. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, the that's the earliest. Actually, there's no earliest. There's no book uh, in the in the 300 years. Is there's no book? Is there is a recitation? You see, uh, uh, which means until now we don't have a book. We have a recitation. You see the book you see have in front of you. It's called uh, Quran today. This is a recitation, not a book. If you if you have a book, if you open the Quran in page number A, it says that this book is printed and approved according to the recitation of, recitation of, recitation of, recitation of. The first recitation is recitation of Muhammad. The last recitation is recitation of Hafs. Hafs. And when did he exist? Is two hundred years after Muhammad. Oh wow. Okay. But but it's still it's recitation. There's no book yet. So, and and whoever wrote that book after that, he did not write a book, the Quran. He wrote the recitation of Hafs. Now, how we know that Hafs is a recitation is accurate? Because according to Muslims, Hafs was accused to be a fraud. <laughs> Hafs, his hadith is rejected, not not weak. You see, weak is fine. His hadith. Like you will not find the hadith made by Hafs exist accepted <laughs> by Muslim. So the, the, the Muslims ad agree that Hafs was a fraud. They accuse him that he was a fraud. He was a thief. Even he, uh, uh, like he, 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 he borrowed your book and he claimed that this is his book. So all bad things, not only him. Hafs, he was a fraud and his father was the same. His stepfather, Hafs, he learned the Quran from his, his stepfather. So now we have the last two source of the Quran two generation is coming from a fraud people was he also an Arab yeah this is what they say yeah but it doesn't matter he's an Arab or not as long he is the one where they take their uh, uh, you know well you have to you have to explain to me now you don't have a book of the Quran you see when somebody says to you we have the the the, the original Quran that's a lie Tell him, is, isn't it? It's okay. This Quran you have, isn't it according to the recitation of Hafs? He would say yes. Okay. Did we just say recitation? <laughs> That's crazy. When Hafs, they always use it as a point of um, 
uh, argument for or case for the, uh, Islam by saying uh, the Quran has been uncorrupted, it's original, never been changed. But we don't have a Quran from Muhammad's time period, right? Like a full manuscript, right? There is nobody have any manuscript. You see, the Muslim when they found a little manuscript in the University of Birmingham. Uh, yeah. uh, they were so happy, but even that one is different from the Quran today and that one is not even dated to Muhammad time It was the leather dating to Muhammad time not the writing you see uh, in, in, in uh, right. people for the pa pa palimpsest. Right? Yeah, the, the people for generations before the science uh, accomplished like papers and etc uh, They were you used the same piece of leather to write over it again like you don't throw it in the garbage it's leather it's expensive right. so they like recycle it pretty yeah much. so like you know we write today something tomorrow uh, maybe this letter is written by my grandfather i don't care what he wrote there i wipe it off wash it with water blank dry it and i use it again as uh, a paper so this uh, this piece was uh, uh, wiped clean written wiped clean written many 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 time and then we have a piece of leather from the time of Muhammad. They don't have a Quran from the time of Muhammad. Not even a single line or a single word is exist today is from the time of Muhammad. Even that one from Birmingham, it will take you two minutes to find that it's not from the time of Muhammad for a very simple reason. In the time of Muhammad, there was no dots and volves in the Arabic language. If you look with me here in the Arabic, let me show you. Uh, Oh, they're called like diacritical marks, correct? Yeah, those uh, those uh, marks, you know, they never been exist in the time of Muhammad. So if you see a book have those marks here, like this is called Kasra, this is called Fatha, this is called Dhamma, this is called Fatha. So all those things you see, this is Sukun. All those things you see. When you see them in the top of letters, that right. means this is not an old script. The same as the Hebrew. The Hebrew, in the beginning, the ancient Hebrew, it, it used to have no dots too. Same as Arabic. Many languages, they used to have the same issue. So those things, actually, those dots and etc., was added long before uh, after Muhammad, and they were added for a reason, which to make it more clear. Because you know the Quran is very confusing without those dots and this is why if you remember yesterday I don't know if you were listening. We were talking about the Quran is speaking about uh, uh, The seven sleepers and their dogs You know, oh, yeah, I think I, I remember you talking about that. yeah it's like, uh, You're talking about the cave or the mountain or right the dog. right according to Al-Tabari not according to me according to Muslims imagine at Tabari, he says that this is most likely it was not Kalbahom, but because the Arabic was not clear, there's a, like letters connected together, so the writing was not clear. So instead of Kalbahom, it must be Kaliahom. Right, the Aramaic, correct? Yeah, which actually it's an Arabic word, but it's coming from the Aramaic, which means the provider. All right. Mm -hmm. So here, this word, they, they explain the Muslim scholars. That this is here. There's a there's a mistake. Here there is no letter ba. You know this is this is not a dog. Kelbahom is very cl close to the word kaliahom. So the way it's written, the old writing, it was not clear. Like now, it's more clear. It was really if you if you, if you read all the Arabic, it's really horrible to read. For me, even it's very hard to read. It's going to take me slow time to try to recognize the letters. So they are saying that look like the uh, the letters appear wrongly. And the one who is copying the manuscript, instead of writing Kaliahom, he wrote Kelbahom. Oh, so is uh, classic Arabic and Aramaic very similar in text? Uh, you know, uh, Aram uh, uh, Arabic is not the same as Aramaic, no, but it's it's born of it. Right, it's it came like, from it. Yeah, it's it's like uh, there's, a, there's a slow change. It's not, if, if you are a person who knows Aram Aramaic, you will notice how, how similar both are because simply it's born from there but Arabic uh, is a collection of languages not only Aramaic but the major uh, uh, impact of a language it was the Aramaic uh, like you know those numbers as an example many people they say to you that those numbers are Arabic numbers 
Right, Arabic numerals, right? <laughs> yeah, those are Arabic numbers. The fact this is this is false. Those are Aramaic numbers. This is not. Uh, sorry, not, not, not uh, those are Indian numbers. Sorry, the those right. numbers here, those numbers, the one you use you right now, which means mm -hmm. the the English Latin numbers today. Those are the Aramaic. <clears throat> Actually, this is the alphabet of the Aramaic. This is the alphabet. The Ar the, the, uh, the Aramaic. Their numbers are the same as alphabet in the same time. So it it, it, it used to use both. So if you go and you read the alpha, the old ancient Aramaic, you will find how much similar it is to the numbers you see in the front of you on the screen. Right. This is the, and the Europeans just credit the Arabs for bringing it into Europe, right? Although yeah, it's not yeah. Arabic but in this text. Is, this is all is false. This is not a true. You know, this Crazy is why this, 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 you. this is why if you go and check where the Quran it says Kahayas. Kahayas. Mm -hmm. The Muslims, they have no idea what this Kahayas mean. Everybody is guessing what it's mean. Kahayas, it's not really a word, but in the same time, it's written as a word. Chapter 19, verse number 1. If you read the translation of Muslims, there's no translation. Read. Kaf ha ya ain sad. What does that mean? Nothing. Nobody knows. Why? Because this is was the alphabet of the Aramaic. Oh wow! Which, it, which is equal to numbers. If you have my book, you will see that Kahias is a is an alphabet of numbers, which mean code, mean that Christ is my Lord, Jesus is my Lord, is my God. So yeah, I did notice that in like almost every surah, they have these weird. Yeah, but words. this is but remember here, which make makes sense. This is in the chapter of Maryam, which means the chapter of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The yeah. first verse there, Jesus is my God. And Muhammad, <laughs> because he did not know Aramaic, he took it, he put it there, he's just copying. You know? He just took wow. it, he put it there. What's the explanation? Like, what's the Muslim explanation for these random words in the first? Everybody try his best to give you his, inter his interpretation for it, but most of Muslims, they agree that Allah knows best. <laughs> Which means nobody knows what it's mean, you know. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I also found it interesting how, you know, uh, Allah in the Quran is having a conversation with Isa, right? But it's in Arabic, so it's like Jesus never spoke Arabic, but there's a conversation of Allah and Jesus in Arabic. We right? can we can let it go. We can say maybe okay. Now it's they are translating for us uh, in Arabic. Allah is translating for us. Let us say. What is the conversation between him and Jesus? This is not really an issue, but the issue is uh, uh, the conversation itself is is more stupid because uh, doesn't Allah say did, when he did, said did, to him, did, "Did I ask you to follow me or something like that?" Well, no, when he said to him, "Did you say to your followers to worship me and my mother?" <laughs> I mean, the conversation here is all either stupid or stupid because uh, why you are asking Jesus? If he asked his followers, if he did ask his followers to worship him and his mother, if you know, read with me. وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِيسَى إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّي إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ Translation. Chapter 5, verse 116. And behold, Allah will say, and here they see, it doesn't say we'll say this is why I say don't accept Muslim translation. It does not say say why the call Allah and when Allah he said, which means he said already, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, didst thou say into men worship me and my mother? Look what Jesus said to Allah. He said to him, Are you stupid? It's in the front of your eyes, Muslims. This is the conversation Jesus said to him. He said, A glory to thee. Never could I say I had no right to say. I had said such a thing, though would indeed know, have you, you have you know you will know it if I said that. Why you are asking me? <laughs> you know. So who is the idiot here? <laughs> it's like two friends having a conversation. <laughs> yeah, he's saying to him, "Well, if I have, if I have said that, you will know." So what is the purpose of this question? <laughs> so Allah pretty much asked a question that he knew the answer to. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a a drama comedy. I mean, why are you asking the guy if you know? Just say Jesus never said that to you. But here, <laughs> and and the Muslims to cover the ass of Muhammad, they say to you, 
Behold, Allah will say. What do you mean Allah will say? It says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ He قَالَ in the past. He said. He said that already. You change the translation. You see, the Muslims' uh, uh, translation is like a, a comedy movie. Everybody give you. Look here. Look how. That one, he said, Allah will speak to Jesus. And look here. It says, and when Allah says. <laughs> oh, is this in the future? It is no, it's it says Kala. He said to him, he spoke to him already. He questioned him. And why Allah will ask him in the future anyway? Because if this is the question is going to be in the future, it said already here. Right. You know what the point of this question? If this is will be in the in the future, that will be even more stupid because you are telling us what Allah will ask Jesus at the judgment day. And Jesus until now he did not read the verse. <laughs> Jesus, remember, is alive, you know. So Jesus, this is a question Allah will ask him at the end of the time, and Jesus is the last one to know what they will ask him. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, you know, what in his time anyway makes sense? It's a stupid religion. Right. I mean, it's a good thing that <laughs> error, that error of the crucifixion was made in the Quran because that's a, a lot. That's a very common conversation point between. Uh, Christians and Muslims, you know, you know, the crucifixion for me in the Quran is very important to speak about because it confirmed that we are right. If right. if the Christian they were wrong, then that verse should say that they are wrong. The verse here does not say the Christian are wrong. The, the verse says that the Bible is true. The Christian believe that Jesus was a crucifixion. Is it true? And what happened? Did you did you watch a, a series of it's called Mr. Monk? No, I haven't. Uh, you should watch it. It's like this guy. He is a uh, uh, he is a detective, and when he go, he is very smart, supposedly. And uh, when a crime happened, he say, "This is what happened." So let us do it the same way. This is what happened. Allah, he fabricated someone look like Jesus. And then the fabricated Jesus was replaced with the real Jesus. <laughs> then the Christians, they saw the fabricated Jesus instead of real Jesus, and they believed that the fabricated Jesus is Jesus. So to make it simple for you and not to be complicated, Jesus was not Jesus. However, it was Jesus was crucified, but it was not the real Jesus, for the real Jesus was not Jesus. However, it is Jesus in the look, but it's not Jesus. I think it's very clear. So the real Jesus was in heaven while the fake Jesus was in the cross. So the Christians, because they saw the fake Jesus in the cross, they thought this is the real Jesus. And they believe it is the real Jesus and they put in their book, it is Jesus. So who is the fault? The fault of who? To write in the Bible that this is the true Jesus. Wow. It is the fault of Allah. The, the, the true witness is the one who he say what he saw. Right? Mm -hmm. If I go to the court... And you ask me, did you see this guy killing this guy? I say yes. Now, if God is playing games and making this guy appear like someone, this is not my business. How I know? <laughs> I just said what I saw. I am an honest man witnessing for what I saw. So what the, the verse here confirming that the stupid religion of Islam confirmed to us that the Christian witness for a true crucifixion you see here it says it was made to appear to them if we go and see the interpretation of this verse they will say that Allah he made them see Jesus in the cross oh. so it confirmed, well, he deceived them yeah it confirm a true vision of Jesus so they did not lie when they say we saw Jesus in the cross right the liar <laughs> here the only liar in this story is Allah oh my god I mean, it's, it's amazing to me how they haven't how the believers, you know, they instead of memorizing and reciting, they should actually read word for word and try to logically, you know, see what it really means. <laughs> you see, the story is very simple. Here, the Islam is confirming the Jews saying what they did, which means the killing. They say we yeah. killed Jesus. Islam does not say the Jews that lie about this. They say mm -hmm. they are wrong. Allah, he wronged them. Allah, he... You know fabricated Jesus so this verse confirmed two things the honesty of the criminal who he admit he committed the crime mm -hmm. and the honesty of the witnesses who witnessed the crime 
and the dishonesty or the deception of the one who made this all happen together which is Allah supposedly so this verse actually alone is enough to prove to us that Islam is a false satanic religion and we explained to uh, to before uh, there's no purpose even there's no reason for this uh, uh, cloning for Jesus because Jesus was already lift up to the sky according to the Muslim story so why he want to clone someone look like Jesus then we need to ask another question do Allah knows that if he if he clone someone look like Jesus that the Christians will believe in the crucifixion of Jesus the Muslims should know that supposedly Allah is God and Allah is all-knowing so Allah he know that the Christians they will be Christians because of this so Allah is the one who made us Christians too <laughs> that's true if no crucifixion right. if someone looked like Jesus no Christian here will believe that Christ was crucified so the, the plan of Allah was stupid in order to save one person he deceived billions. Jeez, and and they were deceived for six hundred years until a messenger came to quote unquote correct and have no, past, right? and have no witnesses of anything. You know, he just say what he say, and then the mm -hmm. and, and the funny the Muslim they say to you, uh, brother, brother, do you know the first Bible is written sixty years after Jesus? <laughs> you have a prophet who came six hundred years after Jesus, Abdul. <laughs> you believe his book. A person who never saw Jesus, never met Jesus, and he have nothing to do with the, the land of Jesus, the language of Jesus, yet you accept what he say. They say over. the same thing about, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Like, who are they? Who are these people? <laughs> well, we know who are they. Let me ask the same question. Who is Muhammad? You see, yesterday we have a person who is Quran only, right? If we go in the whole Quran and we ask the Muslims, who is Muhammad in this book? There's no yeah, answer. No, no, no. Who is Muhammad? Who is his father? Here we go. If the Muslims have only one book, it's called the Quran as a holy book. If we read about Muhammad's name written in the Quran, there's nowhere it says who is Muhammad. It says, and there is no, and Muhammad is just a messenger. All the messengers before him die, or you know. So if he die or get killed, you are going to go against him. Like, who is Muhammad? And that goes for almost every man in the book they consider prophets, right? There's, yeah, there's but, not enough details but they don't for have, people to know who they are. You see, even in the hadith, even in the books of Sirah, which is written long after Muhammad too, nobody knows who is Muhammad. As an example, Muhammad, he, the Muslim, they say, Muhammad name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Muhammad. Son of the slave of Allah. <laughs> ibn Abd. Allah, okay, nice to meet you. Now, if we go and we switch to English, that will make him in English Muhammad Ibn Abd Allah. If we ask the Muslims, is Muhammad father a believer in Allah? They will say no. <laughs> How for God's sake he is the son of a man his name the slave of Allah Abdullah mean the slave of Allah but yet this man he don't believe in Allah and he will go to hell yeah, most likely not... most likely the real name of Muhammad father is Abdullah you see all his uncles they have a name of a slave of one of the pagan gods al muttalib like his grandfather his uh, his uh, his uncles all of them abdu uzza abdu manat abdu uh, oh, Ab yeah, abdullah yeah, yeah. most likely Those are the three idols right yeah most likely his father is abdullah not abdullah but it was very embarrassing for the muslims to call their prophet by the name of Abdullah, and yet he claimed to be the messenger of God. So they changed it from Abdullah, from Abdullah to Abdullah, Ab Abdullah to Abdullah. However, there is nothing about Muhammad. There is no proof. There is nothing. Nobody knows who is this guy. Right. You don't even have a, like a setting, a time, not a place. This, you know. Not only this. What about we ask them the, sto the same story about uh, uh, names mentioned in the in the in the, in the Quran? 
Right, like and Adam, the, and the right, Quran. Anyone else. No, I'm not going to ask who is Adam because suppose he's the first man. So if we ask them who is Idris, who is Idris? They don't know. Who is Saleh? Saleh who? We who is Saleh? Who is this guy Saleh? We don't know. Who is Saleh? And don't you always hear these people say, "Oh, we love and respect the prophets more than you do." Who is who is Al Khudr? <laughs> know them. Who is Al Who is Al Khudr? <laughs> who is Al Qurnain? I mean, have you ever heard of man? His name is the man with the two horn. <laughs> is that a name? <laughs> Sounds like a beast. <laughs> Muslims, is that a name? Have you ever heard of a man? His name. This is cannot be a name. Who is the Qurnain? I want to know. Any Abdul is in the bushes. <laughs> so when the uh, uh, when the Muslims speak about uh, names and people, who are they? Well, they should look. Let me show you the stupidity of the Quran in 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 two seconds. Chapter 18, verse number 83, saying the following, and this is the Muslim translation, be my witness, everybody. All right. They asked thee about Dul Qurnain. People are asking the Jews, actually, it was the Jews who got Muhammad busted. The Jews they came to Muhammad. Muhammad was the joke of the town. The Jews they make fun of him. They came to him, they said to him, There's a prophet, his name is Dul Qurnain. What do you know about him? Muhammad, he believes is a prophet, the idiot. <laughs> So he could not answer them right away. They went home and then he called them back. He got his reference. He searched Google, you know, and now he <laughs> got the answer from Allah. Look, they asked thee uh, concerning the Quran say, I will rehearse to you something of his story. So now Muhammad, he got the answer from Allah. Seriously. Verily, we establish his power on earth. They are asking you who is he, not who, what he did. Even the answer is stupid. Who is the Quran? We establish his power in the earth. Everybody knows this is the, the name of Zul Qurnain is very well known in the Middle East about uh, about Alexander the Great. Why? Because those Roman they used to have a helmet have two horn in it, especially the king. So he was called the man with the two horn. <laughs> That's all. But this is not his name. Yeah. So now we want to establish for you knowledge about him. And here we go. Muhammad start doing poo poo. He, this man, he followed away until when he reached the sitting of the sun, he found that sitting in a spring of murky water. Here we go. Now Allah is giving us answers of history. <laughs> Zul Qurnain, he found where the sun set in the murky water. Is he uh, considered a prophet? He's considered as a prophet, yeah, because you see here, Allah speak to him directly and Allah guide him. You know, we accomplish for him the power. I mean, what's their idea of what a prophet is? Do they know what a prophet even is? Well, it, it doesn't matter, you see, because Zulqarnain was a famous warrior, so he must be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You know, he killed a lot of people. He raped a lot of people, and he was a bisexual. <laughs> and he was a he bisexual. Was a action, right? and, yeah, and he was a bisexual, so obviously he was he was <laughs> a prophet. So here, you will see, and the funny Allah, he spoke to Zulqarnain, but he never spoke to Muhammad. Yeah, it's true. You know, uh, I mean, in the Bible, you you see God having a, some sort of communication, direct communication with all the patriarchs, right? But you don't see that with Muhammad. You know, God, He have uh, for us as a Christian, we believe that God, uh, it's possible to communicate with every one of us, right? If, if we want to listen to Him. However, in Islam, there's something unique. Muhammad, he never received the one verse from his God directly, according to Muslims, exactly. and all Muslims agree that he received all what he have from a delivery guy. His name is Jibreel. <laughs> delivery guy. <laughs> and the delivery guy, he always come in the wrong time. As an example, if you remember, we showed you the story about Al-Fatiha, where Al-Fatiha delivered to Muhammad during the poo, poo time. You know? Each time, Muhammad, you want to go out to do poo, -poo the delivery guy, he said to him, Muhammad, and Muhammad, he ran away. I mean, and, and the funny, the Muslim, they said to me, this doesn't say he is going to go to Pupu. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it says each time, he said, it says he each time he went out, that, uh, okay, what do you mean each time he went out? That's mean each time he went out. If, if this is not about Pupu, <laughs> that would be even funny. Each time he get out, Muhammad, he heard the voice of Muhammad, he ran. How many times a day he do it? Like what Muhammad was going out during the day, like one time a day, you know, there's no way. His house was one room and you have to get out. So what do you mean each time he went out, he hear a voice and he run 
And why Muhammad, like imagine a guy, you, you see him in the street and he's running. <laughs> but there's nobody chasing him. Uh, Muhammad, he heard a voice. That is a sign of madness. This is not a sign of a prophethood. <laughs> why, why Mary, when she heard the angel, she did not run? You know, according, right, according, right. according to Islam, the angel, he came to Mary or the spirit of Allah and he said to her, Oh, Mary. Okay, why Mary, when she heard the voice, she did not run? And Jibril is the only quote unquote spirit slash angel, right? In, in the entire Quran. Well, you know, no, there is a, there is a Quran like my mission, like Jibrail and Mikael. You know, those are angels copied from uh, uh, the Jews too. But the, yeah. but uh, in Islam, uh, there is many angels, and everyone is uh, he have different job. Like they have Azrael, uh, they have uh, uh, Israfil. As an example, is Azrael is the one who is in charge in charge uh, of death. Uh, Israfil. Uh, is the one he is in charge, uh, you know, by protecting the, the board. Allah have a board. Is there an English equivalent to that word, to that name? All those stories, all those names are coming from Jewish background or Saudi, oh, okay. or even from the Christians. It's a collection, uh, you know, legends, uh, right? Legends and myths. Some is true names, which is mm -hmm. coming from a real source, and some it's coming from, like, if you go as an example. The story of Harut and Marut. Uh, Cain and Abel, right? Harut, no. Harut are Cain and Abel are not angels. Harut and Marut uh, are two angels who Allah sent down in the uh, in the Babylon Tower. And you can tell here right away how the story and where the story is coming from by mentioning the Babylon Tower. In chapter 2, verse number 102, it says. And follow that which the devil, the, the uh, devils falsely related against the kingdom of Solomon. Solomon disbelieved not, but the devils disbelieved teaching mankind magic, and that which was revealed into the angels in the Babylon. You see the Babel Tower, mm -hmm. uh, Harut and Marut. So the Quran confirmed that those those are two angels. One his name is Marut and one his name is Harut. Now those are not coming from uh, the names are coming from the, the, the look at the location, the baby loan. This is those are names coming from Persia. Oh wow. And north of Iraq, yes. So Harut and Marut both are two angels, they are in charge of magic. Now if we go uh, and read the story about Harut and Marut, you will find that Islamic resource believe that those are two angels. They accuse, if you remember where, where the Quran says that the angels, they said to Allah, are you going to create someone do mischievement? So he said to them, okay, you know what? Uh, you, if I send you two, you will do mischievement too. So uh, they, he said to them, bring me two angels, the best of yours, and I will give them the nature of a human being, which means the, the desire. And uh, and the temptation, uh, and we will see if you will do uh, uh, what Adam and his children would do. So they choose Harut and Marut, and then Allah He sent them in a mission down to the earth, as we said, to 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 see if they will be tempted or not. Uh, and then a woman, her name is Al Zuhra, uh, which is. Uh, you know uh, what her name in english uh, uh, venus 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 which is a greek right, right. which is a greek goddess of a beauty and sexuality so as zohra she came to them uh, and she uh, seduced them uh, to sleep with her and to make the story simple at the end they step with her and she made them uh, leave islam the two angels which is funny and then uh, they not only that they gave her the, the the password to pass through the heaven and when she was going up to the sky you know yeah this is not this is not my statement you know i can you know what uh, uh, give give me a minute i will hang up on you let me let me pull up the sort the resource even mm -hmm. though that we are going out a little bit from the topic i see somebody trying to call and you can call me back if you don't mind and uh, I, I will show this in the screen all right yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.
Thank yeah. you, thank you. If, if the guy is trying to call, he's a Muslim, please go ahead. Here we go. We hang up just for you. All right. Uh, if we go and search for the story, and just to show you how, how much fiction stories this, this cult is, is full of. All, everything in Islam is coming from somewhere. There's nothing original from Islam. Nothing, zero. Everything is a story in story from somebody. If we go here, the account and her of Harut and Marut. Hello? Okay, we lost you. This is the story of Harut and Marut according to the Muslims. This, remember, this is a Muslim website. This is alislam.org. I have nothing to do with it. So don't tell me, you know, this is your story, this is your Islam website, etc. If you go down here, you can read the whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, teaching about it. But you will see that speaking about the woman, her name is Al Zuhra, which is the Arabic word or mean name for the woman, which is known as Venus. This woman, Al Zuhra, she was the most beautiful woman in the earth. Her breast was big, and she have very beautiful nipples. Her legs is amazing. Her bum is astonishing. Her lips is like a balloon. And her eyelashes like a wings of a eagle. Some descriptions claim that. So here you see, uh, it's it speak about this woman that Allah He sent those two angels in the form of of a human. And then when he went down, uh, Allah He removed all the curtains of the sky so that they may. Uh, uh, make his power visible to the angels and he sent those two angels to earth in the form of two handsome men and made them camp in the Babylon I mean ask yourself why in the Babylon because this is was the the, the the elevator where everybody come down from the sky according to the Sabian so Muhammad is adopting the story of the Sabian of the Babylon tower that this is where angels descended from heaven when they came to the earth they saw a very beautiful woman advancing toward them. She was fully adorned and performed. Her face was unveiled like, what the heck? I mean, if I am there and I was an angel, I would be tempted too. You cannot, you cannot resist this. Look how so beautiful she is, you know? And then the angels had a thought about the women, which means the angels now get horny. Have you ever heard of this? Angels are getting horny. They want to have sex. And then they were forbidden from the, uh, from. They, they, they discuss it between themselves like should we sleep with her? What do you think man? Look at her look at this look at she is so hot Oh Man two angels now they are first time discussing how they can be a teenage a chase and two after one woman like imagine here. This is orgy sex party sex two angels one woman. I mean why you don't send two women? I mean, how decent those angels to the point they want to both sleep with one woman in the same time. Amazing. So suddenly the angels turn to be a, a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, uh, trashy people who want to have sex with the women in the same time. And I cannot explain that. After walking a few steps, bashing over, pour them, etc. So it's um, to make it simple, you can read the story <coughs> by yourself. Uh, they step with this woman. And then she gave them the passcode. Oh, sorry, they gave her the passcode to heaven. And when she was descending, descending to heaven, Allah He got the news that she is coming. So Allah He cursed her and He made her the planet Venus. Obviously, this is a true story. As you see in the front of you. Do you see it? Even they say this is the star Venus. This is a star Venus was very beautiful woman. She had gone to one of those two angels for obtaining some kind of uh, decision at the very uh, first sight of her. That angel fell in love with her and he told her the, that the truth. 
is uh, is with you and my judgment will be in you forever etc so this is this is Venus what this, this is the Muslim talking not me this is not me talking and then after they gave her the code the passcode after having sex with her bang bang bing bing wong wong wing wing you name it then and they and they killed the boy and they killed the man blah 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 uh, and they made she made them leave Islam and convert to to her God uh, they gave her they gave her the passcode to heaven <clears throat> they refused look here they refused to teach the women how to go to heaven and she in return did not fulfill the desire which means she not she did not take off her panty all right she have a deal with them if you want me to all to take off my panty for you you have to teach me how to go to heaven well in the beginning they refused but then at the end they decide to do it so then in order etc blah 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 and then uh, when this woman she went to heaven the two stood wide eyed Allah turned the women into a form of a star do you see it so what do you tell me where, where Islam story is coming from Islam story is a collection of the Greeks uh, mythology uh, a Christian cults uh, stories uh, uh, Jewish legions uh, pagans you name it it's a collection of everything now I don't know why I mean why this Venus is not coming to me I mean this is not even fair you see every day I read for you stories about Venus come to this guy Venus come to this guy this guy did you see the story in the other day the guy the, the beautiful genie woman she wanna she'll come to his room she wanna uh, she can she chase him in the bedroom in the bathroom. I mean why those female genie are not coming to me I read the stories. I got nothing of it. I mean, it's not even fair Do we have any Muslim would like to call? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim would like to call do you really Muslims believe that the two angels of Allah they have sex with Venus Huh? Venus William? Who is Venus William? I hope she is not something scary. Who's that? Do we have any Muslim would like to call? <clears throat> look here, look, look how many explanations for this verse here. While explaining this verse, Imam al Hassan al Askari has said that Imam al Sadiq said that after that, I mean, how many that there? You see, I was doing proofreading for my book, and and uh, and the person, which is uh, which is a very very wonderful person, helping me in my book, uh, told me how many how many times you keep saying, however, however, <laughs> are you asking me? Go here how that 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 he said okay however many people began to deceive other through magic sorcery Allah sent two angels to messenger uh, of that time so that they may show the people what was magic and to explain to them he will go Allah open a school of magic in earth Allah he sent two angels in the earth to open a school of sorcery you believe it that's astonishing when I can join imagine guys if I can join this school and then I see a woman in the front of me and she is so beautiful and I do my magic Right away, she see me very handsome, like Ahmadinejad, or like Yasser Arafat, and right away she will be in love with me. I mean, like, look at him; he look like Yasser Arafat. He look like Yasser Arafat, unbelievable, you know. And right away she will be in love with me. I want to go and join this school. I mean, where this school? Somebody can you somebody search for me the school of Harut and Marut? Where we it's in the Babylon. Allah opened a school of sorcery to teach us magic. 
and the teachers are angels I mean this is a very high qualification by the way do they have a PhD in magic or master degree I mean it's, this is Islam what magic what was you you know I remember our first time this guy what his name the the fat uh, the, the 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 fatouche the boy uh, uh, Osama, Osama Abdullah, the guy who like act like a girl. Uh, he came to me in the chat room. He said to me, Christian Prince, <laughs> there's no magic, you idiot, stupid. There's no magic. Science proved that there's no magic. Oh, magic. Then I said, Are you sure? He said, Yeah. Are you sure? He said, Yeah. So when I showed him the verse in the Quran, he, he said, um, uh, uh, Yeah, there is magic. There is some magic. Is it true? Uh, when people, they were dying from loving. A second ago, the magic was not exist. Do we have any Abdul? So going back to the topic, my friend, our topic is about the crucifixion of Jesus. Is proven even in the Quran that it is to be true, because if you say to me that Allah He crucifies someone look like Jesus, you just confirm to me the crucifixion. And you confirm to me that Allah is a stupid God, and all what He have to say, oh, it looks like it looked like it's Him, but it was someone else. Well, until you prove to us that it was something else, let us know. You know what I mean? Can you prove to us that it is someone else? You confirm to us that it was there was a crucifixion. You confirm to us that the one who was in the cross looked exactly like Jesus. He is a clone, exactly, which means it's the same, 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 everything. So where is the proof that Jesus was not Jesus? Everything in this cult is a stupid. And you have to be officially certified donkey to believe in Islam not only because of the story but it's a collection of stories as you see everything about it is stupid everything I cannot find uh, uh, let me make a challenge to the Muslims I challenge any Muslim to call me right now and to make a challenge for me about a verse in the Quran Hmm? Just anything. Any Muslim time I do it? Challenge me about a verse or a chapter in the Quran to be amazing. And I will show you how stupid. This is my duty. It's a challenge. Who want to do that? Who is the Muslim want to do that? Open challenge. You see, we, we, we don't have a preset topic. You choose the chapter. I do the job. Anyone? Who is the brave Muslim want to accept the challenge? A friendly challenge. Don't worry. We will not, we will not fight. This is a stupid book from the first verse in the Quran to the last verse in the Quran is a chain of stupidity. Anyone? The funny most of the time after I close my broadcast, people, Muslim, they start calling me in Skype. I mean, we are here. Muslims, they come and they post in YouTube, oh, this guy is lying to you. This guy is, uh, I'm showing everything in the screen. All the reference I say, I read it in front of you. I don't say things from my own pocket. So how I can lie about it? It's in front of you. You are reading with me. Quran. Is a collection of stupid stories 
it's not even qualified to be taught to kids so who is the Muslim on a call <clears throat> if there's any Muslim sharpening his teeth where is this guy with his name Mujahid <laughs> I feel sorry for that guy. By the way, the whole the 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 one we have a seven hours uh, uh, life video debate with this guy. It's it's already all, all of it there. Uh, YouTube it taking it, for some reason it taking so long for YouTube to load everything, but it's already there. So if you want, uh, you can you can find the whole thing there. Uh, do we have any Abdul would like to call? Anyone? No one? Obviously, Islam is an amazing book, and you Christians are trying to uh, to hide the truth. Hmm? Actually, Allah he claim that we are trying to uh, blow wind on the Quran. You believe it? Let us see. The Quran is like a fire like a light and we are trying to uh, all those statements stating uh, that about something something we do in our mouth is and to to the purpose is to stop the light of Allah read with me carefully chapter 9 verse number 32 fain would they ex extinguish Allah light with their mouth <laughs> but Allah will not allow but that his light should be perfected even through unbelievers what through unbelievers what I mean this is amazing how the Muslims they say that the light of Allah which is given to Jesus already is extinguished how the Muslims they say that Allah He sent one hundred twenty-four thousand prophet, and all of them they came with lights from Allah, and their lights is vanished. And then He says nobody can be succeed. Do you see why I say Islam is a stupid religion? Aren't you Muslims believe? That Allah He sent 124,000 prophets and all of them, their books is gone except one. Huh? So you are saying to me, nobody can dis distinguish the, the light of Allah. In the same time, you confirm to me that there's 124,000 prophets, they came with lights and lamps, and all their lamps is broken. Is that a success? Imagine somebody he played chess. He played chess 124,000 time and he lost except one. And yet he claimed to be the champion of the universe and chess. Who is the idiot here? You lose. 124,000 time minus one and you win once according to you which is not true and you claim victory yeah that's exactly 1,000 to uh, 120 uh, uh, 23,999 right I mean how stupid that is who is who uh, Allah is the biggest loser in history imagine Allah saying to us 
he sent 124,000 books, which will make the biggest, huge library, you know. All of them, they are books of God. And then, after a couple of thousand of years, we go to the light library, we find that all of them are missing except one. Based on this, Allah is the worst librarian ever. The most stupid employee, he should be fired a long time ago. And remember that Allah, he preserved his books in the tablet. Yeah, he have a tablet there, which is additional, additional stupid statement from Muhammad. Because if God is God, why he need a tablet? You see, tablet is for someone is limited with memory. Is God? He wrote to Moses the tablet, not for himself. A human being, he have a limited memory. Even if you remember, even if your memory very very good, if something you did not repeat from time to time, you will you will forget. So. God is God, but yet he need to write down everything for himself. In a book, nobody can read except himself. And he put that book between the eyes of an angel. His name is Israfil. And Israfil himself, uh, hold on. Why the angel Israfil, Allah, he put the board between or the the tablet between his eyes anyone knows why he put it there between his eyes between his eyebrows who knows what is the purpose to put the the uh, uh, the board between the eyebrows of the angel anyone knows Between the eyebrows why I'm trying to see in the text if somebody can tell me anyone knows why he put a lawful mahfuz which in chapter 85 verse number 22 between the two eyebrows of the angel Israfil And a Muslim can tell us what, why, why not in the pocket of the angel? Why not in the back of the angel? Why not in the chest, uh, like uh, in the, in the, uh, why between his eyebrows? He has a big head, absolutely. Yes, actually, it described that the distance between his eyebrows is the same distance between the earth and the heavens. So it's big, his face is so big. But why? Still, this is not a reason why he put it there. No, 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 there is a reason. Think deeply. Let us see who of you is a deep thinker. Okay, think about it. If I put something between your eyebrows, what will happen exactly? Anyone can tell me? I'm trying to help you. If I put something between your eyebrows, what is the first thing will come to your mind? He cannot see it. Yeah. If he put it down in his uh, stomach, he can bring it down and read it. If he put it in his pocket, he can open the board and read it. So he put it between his eyebrows so he cannot see it and he cannot read it because this angel, he might read it and tell the CIA or the Jews. You never know. They pay him money. So Allah, he don't trust his angels. So what he did, he created an angel, his name is Israfil, and he said to him, listen, Abdul, this board is going to be between your eyebrows. Your job is to protect him. And I'm going to place it between your eyebrows so you can't see it. However, if you try to look at it, you will have a cross-eyed. Thank you, this, you are smart. This he said, what if the angel he used a mirror 
Hello, man. You think Allah heaven is advanced? There is no mirror there. You know what mirror? Even the water there is murky water. <laughs> Unbelievable. Any Abdul? Until now, we did not get even one Abdul. So we are talking about a God. He guarded his book, only the Quran. The Injil, he did not guard it. The Torah, he did not guard it. Everything except the Quran. The only book he cared for to guard is the Quran. Why? Any Muslim? Why only the Quran? Allah decided to put it in a tablet. Not to forget to mention that all the other books came long before Islam. So how come the last book is the one is going to be in the tablet? The rest they are not they are not important. Allah was saying stupid things there, so it's not worth it to reserve it. I thought nobody can exchange the words of Allah. That's what the Quran says. Isn't it the Torah and the and the Injil and the Zubur, the Psalm, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the book of David, the book of uh, according to Muslims, all prophets have books. Aren't they worth? Because those are at the end of the day, they are not the books of prophets, those are the books of God. Do we have any Abdul? Who is the Abdul when I call me and make a challenge? A challenge about the amazing Quran. If you don't want to talk about the crucifixion of Jesus because it's embarrassing, no problem. We can change the topic. Somebody posted an image of a, of a chicken. Do you know that Allah, according to Muslim, he will sit in the top of a rooster? Have you ever heard of God? He is a rooster cowboy. Any comment from the Abdul? God, but yet he is sitting in the top of a rooster? I mean, this rooster must be a Thanksgiving rooster. What is that? From now on, you better respect now I know why roosters are very aggressive you walk in you know you go to a village you walk in the street and the rooster he attack you like oh you know like what's wrong with your rooster ah, those are the horses of Allah all right no I want a Muslim to challenge me what if a Muslim he says to me well there is nowhere it says that Allah will sit in a rooster and a Muslim want to do that? Uh, actually, as long as we are talking about rooster, Muhammad, he told us a lot of things about rooster, by the way. Uh, and this is why I advise you, who of you here believe in the voodoo? Who of you is a voodoo guy? Do you believe in the voodoo? Let me show you the power of the rooster. For those who are making fun of the rooster, shame on you. Hold on. <laughs> Let us show you the benefit of the rooster, and this is the wisdom of Mahmata Gandhi of Islam, Muhammad. Allah Messenger said, Don't reveal the rooster, don't curse the rooster, rooster for its wake up, wake you up for the prayer. Okay, let it go. Uh, let us see. Let me show you what the rooster can do. Look at this. I mean, look at this, man. Look at this knowledge, man. This is absolutely, absolutely wisdom. Pure wisdom. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3303. 
the prophet said when you hear the crowing of the cocks ask Allah blessing for their crowing indicate that they have seen an angel and when you hear the bearing of oh, sorry the brain of the donkey seek refuge with Allah for they from them because they saw a shaitan so according to the intelligence of Muhammad if you see a rooster making the sound cuckoo 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 that because he saw an angel I am not sure if you people ever been in Jamaica look like Jamaica is full of angels and that explain why there's a lot of hashish and drugs So if we hear the screaming of the rooster, that because he saw an angel. However, the wisdom of the wise prophet of Allah, who is always telling us the truth and no fairy tale stories involved at all. He did not stop with the rooster. He come to us with additional zoo information. He jumped to tell us about Mr. Donkey and the benefit of having donkey. And he said, if you hear the voice of the donkey, oh, oh, seek refuge. I seek refuge. I seek refuge with Allah. I seek refuge Allah from Satan. Because the donkey, he just saw a Satan. And you are telling me that Muhammad is not a prophet? Are you kidding me? How Muhammad know that rooster and donkeys, they have a special feature of X-ray scanning with their eyes. You see, they can see what we cannot see. The shaitan is coming. The shaitan is coming. And nobody noticed except Mr. Donkey. And you tell me that donkey is a stupid animal, you idiot. Don't you see? The funny guys, the funny thing is, Muhammad first time he saw an angel, he was not sure if he is an angel or shaitan. And this is located in a story called The Examination of the Inspiration, which involved Khadija, his first wife, doing a striptease and asking him to sit in the top of her to prove to him if it is either shaitan or an angel. So Muhammad himself is not a qualified to recognize, but yet the donkey he can recognize. Are you listening, Muslims? A donkey, he is more qualified than your prophet to know if it is a shaitan or not. A rooster is more qualified than your prophet to know if it's an angel or not. Any Muslim have a comment about the wisdom of the Prophet of Allah? By the way, in my house, I don't have a security alarm. I have four donkeys and four roosters in every corner. As simple as that. Nobody can beat that. Rooster? The rooster, really, he's seeing an angel? That is the scientific explanation of the prophet of Islam. Don't you think, Muslim, that this is an extreme scientific knowledge from Allah? Muslims, did the prophet say anything about the sound of a frog? What? I mean, 
if if every if, that's mean every animal he make a sound for a reason and that reason have to be involved with Allah, Shaitan, angels. I mean, why necessarily it is rooster and and uh, and, and, and and donkey? What about the dog? Hold on, the prophet he did not leave the dog alone. The prophet he have his own wisdom, which is involve dogs. Because the prophet, peace upon him, is not racist at all. He come to a very scientific proven reasoning that the black dog is shaitan. And by the way, this scientific statement is confirmed by Dr. Moore. If you have a dog and he is a black, he is the devil. Read carefully with me. Abu Dhar reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, somebody asked me what this is in Arabic mean. This is mean Allah pray and Muhammad and salute him because you know Muhammad he is God and Allah is his servant. Said, when any of you stands for a prayer and there is a thing before him uh, equal to a black saddle uh, that cover him, and in the case of uh, if there is not uh, before him a thing equal to a black saddle in his prayer, etc., uh, uh, his prayer would be cut off in the case of, pa of, of passing of a woman as. Ask me, Allah ask you, and the women and the black dog. So three things will destroy the Muslim prayer if they pass in the front of a Muslim when he pray. So if you are a woman, you want to destroy the Muslim prayer, just walk in the front of him. That's it. You destroy his prayer. All right. Or bring your dog with you, or a donkey, ass, and the women and a black dog, not a dog. A black dog I said oh Abu Dhar what feature is there in the black dog which distinguish it from the red dog and the yellow dog he said oh my son of my brother <laughs> I asked the messenger of Allah as you ask me and he said the black dog is the devil <laughs> me that is a pure science and wisdom so yellow dog is okay he's redhead i mean come on you cannot say a redhead is a devil he's a redhead are you stupid or what white dog is not a devil hello he's white what's wrong with you But a black dog make him the devil. Do we have any Muslim when I make a comment about the rooster, the donkey, the dog? By the way, Muhammad is expert about animals. As an example, he speak to us about the lizard uh, and uh, the mice. Like as an example. Muhammad, he tell us the story of Adam, uh, sorry, not Adam, the story of Noah. When when the prophet uh, of Allah, peace upon him, told the story of Noah, he said that, uh, according to his followers, that when Noah, he put all the animals on the ship. Before he finished putting all the animals, he noticed and he saw that it was a mice. Mice, Tom and Jerry. Hello. Hello, CP. Yes. Um, may I ask you about the, the difference between the concept of devil and shaitan in Islam and also the genes because it's a bit confusing. Okay, no problem. I will answer you. That all? Yeah, that's all. Okay, <laughs> basically. I will answer you. Let me finish this one. I will answer you about this. Yeah. Yeah, all right, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all those who call. By the way, I appreciate you. I, I, uh, those who call us, they, I, they, they are, 
uh, important for what we do. Uh, so what what Muhammad he claimed that when uh, Noah he saw the mice and you don't want to have a mice in your ship, he was so worried that the mice is going to eat his food. I mean, you imagine you have like three tons of a flour, five tons of banana, seven tons of uh, whatever uh, seeds, and then you have a mice is going to eat it alone. You don't know the mice in the old days. They used to be really huge like elephants. So Noah, he don't know what to do. And he was trying to get the lion inside the ship. And he was waiting for the lion to sleep. But Allah, he made the lion have cold. And because he have cold, he was not able to move. He had a fever, so he's sick. So now he carried the lion. He put him in the ship. And because now he have cold, after he put him in the ship, the lion, by the will of Allah, he sneezed, and a cat came out of his mouth. <laughs> And then since then, this cat was able to chase this mice and retrain him from eating all the food of Noah in the ship. And this is a true story for sure. I hope the Muslims, uh, I mean, it's obviously true. Now, regarding what our brother here, he asked about the shaitan and the devil. You see, Satan is not even an Arabic word. Muhammad is copying other, uh, you know, uh, uh, belief. Uh, the, as, as we said before, everything is a copy from somewhere. However, Muhammad, in his Quran, he called the first Satan Iblis. And this word too is not Arabic. You can search it in Google, you can search and you see, you find what is the origin of Iblis. We, we ask uh, the angels to bow down to Adam, except Iblis, he did not. Iblis here is a Satan, but he is the first Satan. And here actually the story is very stupid, because Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam. But Iblis is not from the angels. You see, there's there's a, always a misunderstanding for the Christians about Shaitan or Satan in Islam and Satan in Christianity. In Christianity, Satan is a fallen angel. In Islam, Satan is not and never was an angel. He was one of the jinn. He's a genie. Genie who they are created from fire, not demon. So he is not a demon. He is a genie. But he is the first devil. This is Iblis. All right. This is Iblis. So he called him Iblis. Now, after that, we will see the Quran is speaking about Satan's, not one Shaitan, not one Iblis. Many of them. In the chapter, as an example, chapter 6, verse number 112, it says, We made for every prophet enemies from Satan's. You see here it says evil one. It doesn't say that. It's a lie. This is a false translation. It says literally Satan's. Here they translate it as devils. But it is... In, in Arabic is shaitan, which is coming as Satan. So we have to use not devil, really. We have to use Satan. So it was Allah is the one who made devils against us. It was the plan of Allah. And those shaitans, they are not one shaitan no more. For according to Islam, as you see here, shayateen. You see, this is the word as it is, shayateen. Allah, he made enemies for every prophet from Satan's. Now, why here he is saying shayateen? Shayateen means Satan, not one Satan, many. Because the Muslim believe that shaitan, the first shaitan or the first, the, the one is called Iblis, he was the only one. But Allah, when he created him, he created for him a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left leg. So when he shake this and that, he if himself, excuse my language, 
and then at the end of the day he lay ten eggs and from every egg 70 devil between male and female they come out which mean the first devil was it was uh, what what we can call him we cannot say transgender we can, what he, what do we call him if a creature is male and female at the same time what he is what is the word in english so the first the first iblis he was male and female in the same time have a penis in the right leg have a vagina in the left leg and when he shake his legs he if himself and then he lay eggs in the at the end of the day 10 eggs and from the every egg every day 70 shaitan and shaitan okay this guys they are saying the word here hey here ma for forget it I'm, I'm not going to read it's going to take me a week to read this word what is that hold on hold on what is that man uh, lord have mercy and you tell me why i sometimes i read the word wrong i mean how someone coming from the middle east like me with education of muhammad about rooster is going to read this word let me read it for you him uh for odit Hum, hum, hummus this is hummus i got it <laughs> i was i was asking myself where the word hummus is coming from okay so the first shaitan obviously he was infected with hummus or let us say he was a hummus guy so he was a male and female <laughs> hummus is easier from the word you get. i mean for god's sake you could not find word easier for me to read than this i'm going to speak the spend too much to train myself to read it have mercy on me guys i mean this is not even fair anyway so the shaitan was a person who have a hummus a penis in the by, by the way if a muslim there is saying his guy is lying i challenge you to say just say to the text or call me and i will show you the reference so the devil or shaitan simply can be it can be depend in the in the sentence can be the first shaitan the first one or it can be from his seeds for they believe that the first shaitan he had sex with himself and actually i mean shaitan was lucky imagine guys if allah he created for us a male part in the right leg and a female part in the left leg i mean who need women anymore women bye bye women bye bye we do not need you and then at the end of the day you lay eggs you will never find yourself out out of food in the morning you lay eggs you cook your eggs you eat them and everybody is happy no problem no divorce no etc have sex with yourself you are a hummus guy anyway uh so this religion have a lot of stupid things hey, hold on i need to turn the light on <clears throat> i can't believe it that you guys you gave me that word to read i mean that's i prefer to go and 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 the study from zero islamic sharia law better than reading that word uh let me find you the reference about the shaitan laying eggs hold on <laughs> all right I'm just trying to find an official Islamic website. So uh, Muslim, they will not say to me, you are reading from, you know. Um, all right.
Chiton. I have it in the front of me in Al Qurtubi, but I'm trying to find a better website. Looks like we are stuck with this one. Let us see. Okay. All right. This is the book of Al Qurtubi. Tafsir Al Qurtubi, as you see, nothing of my own. This is your Islamic official website, Muslims Abdul. That's not my book, not my website. Tafsir Al Qurtubi, volume number 10. Uh, a shabi, he said, a man he asked me, Do Iblis, which means the first shaitan, have a wife? He said, that is a wedding party I did not witness. <laughs> that is a wedding party I did not witness. I like this guy. And then they continue saying, <coughs> uh, that Mujahid said, that Iblis, he if his, which means penis, with the vagina he have, of himself so he confirmed that at least he have a penis and he have a vagina and then he this guy he says five eggs then he lay down five eggs and this is the source of his children's and it says that Allah he said Allah he created for him in the right thigh of his uh, leg a, a, a penis and in the left thigh of his leg, a vagina. So he, if this, by that. You see, remember the Muslim, they say to me that the word nukah mean marriage. Do you remember? They say that the word yank, uh, nukah mean marriage, right? Here we go. This is the word nukah here. Let me make it big. It's speaking about shaitan, if in himself. Don't tell me he is going to marry himself. All right, he have a penis, he have a vagina. It says, So he do nukah by this to that. What this and to that, he explained. He says, in the right, in the right leg, he have a vagina, he have a he have a penis, in the left leg, he have a vagina. So he if this by that, and then he continues saying, and every day he lay down uh, 10 eggs. And from every egg, uh, there is 70 devil, male and female, come out. So the first one was male, uh, sorry, was male and female in the same time. The first shaitan, that is Iblis. That's why we say Iblis. The devils are his babies. So are we clear with this question? The devils are the babies of Iblis. Now, the genie simply is a creature. He is made from fire, but not every genie is a devil or shaitan. There is genies who they are Muslims. There is genies who they are Christians, according to Islam. There is genies who they are Jewish, Hindus, Buddha. You know, there is genies who they are atheists. So the genie is the same creature as the devil, but he is. Uh, not necessarily a, a bad one. He is just a genie from the same nature. Like let's say uh, a human being, there is someone who's a criminal, and there is a human being who's a good person. So the Muslim claim that genie, both are genie, but the first one who disobey Allah, it was Iblis. This is a genie, his name is Iblis. But here we have a problem about this. Because if the first shaitan, or the first genie, uh, uh, Iblis, Iblis who was the first uh, person to disobey Allah. As you see, he have a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left leg. That means all the genie, when Allah, he created them, they have a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left leg. So why the first one all of them they have a penis and vagina but then the ones after there is male and female anyone can explain to us i don't know if my idea is clear 
like imagine you are a man who have a vagina and uh, a penis in the same time okay and then you have sex with yourself and then you lay eggs so why the eggs is not like you any Muslim can give us an idea why the eggs are eggs of male and female which mean male male shaitan and female shaitan and I want the Muslim to show me since when you must believe that shaitan is male and female uh, I hope we answer this let us see oh I send you an Arabic to call me This is Islam, my friend. Islam is its collection of stupid stories, and only foolish people they can believe in such a garbage, you know. And by the way, if you are a person trying to marry a Muslim woman, you better be careful first that she is not dating a genie, because Muslims believe that Muslim women they always sleep with genie. There's a guy he called the Sheikh live on TV, and he told him each time he opened the door of his uh, in, in the bedroom of his wife. He, she is doing something, you know, she's horny, you know. So uh, the sheikh, he told him, my brother, a'uzu billah, she is having sexual relationship with the genie. I advise you to read Quran. Like, what? My what? The wife is having sex with the genie, and now I have to read Quran? My wife, her panty is off for the genie, and now it's time for me to read Quran. <laughs> you idiot. Do something. Obviously, she's horny. What genie? Go to the bed, help your wife. So they convince themselves that they are women, they are sleeping with genie, and not only that, they convince themselves that Muslim men they sleep they sleep with genie female too. There is once a, a Muslim woman, obviously, she is a whore, you know, because I think she was making fun of those, uh, uh, but she still for me she is a whore because the way she was talking is a whore talk. She called the TV. And she was talking like you know in a sexual way my well, brother I'm very beautiful and each time I take off my clothes the fish in the fish tank they move in a strange way you know and, and the shake is drinking water like he's sweating there's two of them <coughs> sister <coughs> sister sister <coughs> A sister, I advise you, uh, uh, sister, look like those fish in the in the tank. Uh, they are genie and they are looking at your pure, uh, uh, beautiful uh, buddy sister. And he is sweating, man. almost he is going crazy. Uh, so, sister, I advise you not to change your clothes in the front of the fish tank. She said, but this is the only room I have. He said, oh, okay, uh, sister, what about you cover the fish tank with a blanket? <laughs> a fish genie? What do you mean the fish is shaking when your sister, she was taking off her clothes in the front of the fish tank? The fish was masturbating. The fish could not resist to see the ass of a Muslim. Muslims, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I don't want to go and show you again what Muslims they post about sex with jinn. They believe in it big time. Yeah. You know, I'm a very jealous man. If I get married, no fish allowed to enter my house. No fish tank. You never know. The black dog is a genie, shaitan. You know? Uh, I mean, everything is dangerous. You never know. Muhammad, he said that shayateen, Satan, can come to you in a form of anything. It can come to you as a snake. It can come to you as a animal, normal animal. As you see, fish, you know, anything. Even the Muslim believe actually that even uh, uh, monkeys they are Muslims. So like the, the 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 Islamic kingdom is beyond a human being. The Quran confirm actually that every animal in this earth is a Muslim. Even rocks are Muslims. You know. 
Do we have any Muslim would like to call? I don't know. I did not mean. Actually, there's a book. I wish I can have it again. I I I, I did read this book a long time ago, like more than 120 years ago, when I was like uh, 70 years old at that at that time. Uh, it's called Interview with a Genie. Interview with a Genie. The Muslims they claim in that book that a genie he he was interviewed by a Muslim Imam. And he revealed a lot of secrets. Let me show you something. You guys are changing my topic. I mean, why? It's okay, it's okay. I don't know if you heard that a Saudi family, she did sue a genie. This is the CNN, which is not a source of news for me, you know, but the CNN will not play play with the Muslims because they love the Muslims, as you know. Saudi family sues a jinn, a ledge of harassment. <laughs> this family, they are noticing that there's a lose of food and money and jewelry in the house. And there's a noise in the house, so they claim that this genie is doing that. And imagine this is happening in the city of Al Medina, where Muhammad used to live. The family which has lived in the same house near the holy city of Al Medina 15 years said it became aware. You see, here there's no spirit, this is a false translation. Because because genie is not a spirit, that is a statement of the CNN. Genie is a jinn, not a spirit. Look, look how stupid when 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 the news come from a Western mouth who do not know what Islam is about. How they say to you it's a jinn, and then you say it's a spirit. They don't say that. They don't believe in a spirit. This is not a spirit. This is a creature, physical creature. So those people they sue the genie to the Sharia Islamic court. I wonder. What the Sharia court did to the genie. No. But everything is possible in this mad religion. There's no limitation with the stupidity. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? I used to see a genie from time to time. You know, let me let me name name some of the genies I saw through my life in America. I saw genie George Bush, I saw the genie Obama, I saw the genie Trump, I saw the genie the the uh, son of law of Trump, I saw the genie uh, in Fox News. Actually, everybody in Fox News is a genie. You know, especially women, short skirt. Their their smile is like it's it's like a picture you took it ten years ago and you you place it in the front of the screen they are they are they are smiling for nothing the, the teeth is right like what what why you are why why you are smiling you know and all the females in the TV their short skirt and they have nice legs I mean I wish one day they will show us a woman she have short skirt but she have no nice legs I mean what is it a must it is a must those are the genies of America now. You Muslims, who is your genie? Hmm? No, no, seriously. American TV stations, it's it's really funny for me. It's like, you know, the 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 even the even the male, you know, the male in the TV, like you know, today President Trump, he's he's reporting the news, but his mouth is like, you know, what is do you put a glue there? The news is funny. Not I'm not talking against uh, Fox News, but all, all of them, all of them, they are saying, you know, it's like it's more unbelievable. The more silly. They remind me of the news in the Middle East. Middle, Middle East news is better. Middle East news, you do not need to watch it because it's the same news we heard 10 years ago. 
our be blessed our king today he order that everything in the country should work in order and in order to make everything work in order he gave more order to order those orders be praised to the king Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad the end of the news hold on hold on I did not finish the news report hold on I remember many years ago when the Saudi TV station they report the weather news it was the most hilarious weather news ever the guy he have a map behind him and he said the following listen carefully Bismillah, alhamdulillah, Allahumma salli wa sayyidina Muhammad. Today we are going to trade. Uh, my friend, don't call. Come on. Aren't you listening? Hold on. Hold your horses. Tomorrow, if Allah will, we might have some cloud. And if Allah will, the wind is going to speed in the 20 mile an hour. However, in the city of Reda, if Allah will, inshallah, uh, if Allah will, inshallah, we might have a sandstorm. And if inshallah, Allah will, is going to be the degree between 35 to 40, inshallah. And inshallah, because he's afraid, he's afraid to say tomorrow is going to be this, they will, they will claim that he knew the future, they will kill him. You know what I mean? This is why he keeps saying inshallah every two words he said the news about the weather he say inshallah because how you know the future you liar huh are you claiming to be a god you will kill him so every two words he say about the weather he say inshallah it's like a you know <laughs> allah knows best <laughs> is that the weather news <laughs> inshallah as long as you are saying inshallah you are safe and you are fine <laughs> but yet this is what i knew <laughs> i remember once uh, the king of saudi arabia was was going down the ladder of the airplane i died from laughing guys honest to god i died laughing now his majesty his first his right foot is touching the first step of the ladder. Now he is moving the abaya, and I see his second foot is moving toward. He stop. He stop now. He look at the right. His Highness he is looking at the right, and the prince behind him is looking at him. Now the king, our king, may Allah bless him. He is moving his step again toward the second step of the airplane now he's going up he's going more up he's holding the steering with his right hand may allah arm you and arm your hand and support you now he is going up more he stood up look he's looking at us he looks he's looking at us i mean it is hilarious it is just a guy going on the stairs but you know the first bicycle arrived to Saudi Arabia. Anyone knows what happened to it? Who knows? The first bicycle arrived to Saudi Arabia was arrested. Not the one who brought it. The bike itself was arrested. For they accuse it to be the bike of the devil. This is devil bike. They arrest the bike. And you are telling me why this in the madness in the world? Those are the one who import Islam around. Once, and this is something I witnessed myself. Suddenly, the police appear in Saudi Arabia, in the in the city where I was. We 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 we. A lot of people are gathering. I know what what's happening here. You know, people from everywhere gathering, and etc. I was saying, what's wrong? What's happening? And then they open the gate. The guy opened his house. They open the gate. They flood inside. Like, is there something? I thought maybe he's a spy. He is a, something, you know. And then uh, the, the 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 story was 
this guy he have he made uh, like a form of duck for flower container for flower but in the form of a duck somebody reported to him that he have idols at home <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so the sharia law come with the police and the judge and they have an order from the judge of the sharia law to behead the dogs and the muslims they were lining up and a guy come out with the sword and he start beheading the dogs inside the yard of this man and all the Muslims, they were screaming, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Takbir. Unbelievable. That is Islam. The most high stupid religion. Somebody there, his name is Most High. I think he means something else. But Islam is the most high as hashish. Nobody high more than Islam. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, and you wonder why those people are still behind everything now this uh, crown prince of saudi arabia is trying his best to 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 change i don't know how much successful he will be but this country is really screwed up you know <clears throat> anyway uh do we have any muslim want to call i don't want to receive calls from christians really i want muslims to call us I want you to hear the other side of the story. Maybe we are lying about the Muslims. Maybe the black dog is not the devil. Maybe Muhammad he meant something else. <laughs> the black dog is the devil. Poor black dog. I mean, imagine you are a black dog and live in a Muslim country. How lucky you are. I mean, seriously, how lucky you are just for being a black. If you are blonde, you are really lucky. Hmm? Even lizard, they want to kill the lizard. You remember the story of the lizard, right? Somebody told me that the story of Abraham about fire is exists in the Bible. My friend, we are not talking about that. The Muhammad, he told them that the lizard tried to kill Abraham by fire. Lizard. I mean, obviously, this, this man, Muhammad, is all over the place with his uh, zoo. lizard trying to kill the prophet yeah and this is why Muhammad he said uh, you know if you uh, um, if you kill a lizard from the first shot Allah will give you blah 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 deeds if from the second shot you will get like blah 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 but less deeds so like the one who killed the lizard uh, the Allah will bless you more like you will get like a uh, top of the line of deeds if you if you kill it from the first shot actually i'm thinking to move to arizona because that you can imagine in arizona how many deeds i can get every day here where i live I don't, we don't see uh, we don't see really too much lizard here it's not like a, a desert area uh, but if you live in a, uh, in a desert area i think you can make a lot of deeds every day <clears throat> Muhammad he said there's an animal it's called this is a lizard but it's called al-wazal let me see what is the equal for it in uh, uh, in English you see here Muhammad is giving names for those you see here this is the story Allah Apostle order that salamander <laughs> jihad against the black dogs jihad against pigs jihad against dogs in general now the jihad is extending against mr. salamander I mean even little tiny creature who is very useful by the way for a human they want to kill him hold on let me find you a picture of mr salamander let us see how mr salamander look like 
in case you do not know how it looked like you know let's see if we can find salamander look how scary this salamander is I mean seriously that is a very dangerous creature and this is the one was trying to kill Prophet Ibrahim how disgusting are you if I see you I will chop you pieces I will do beheading for you I will make a video on YouTube and post it there for trying to kill the Prophet Abraham actually I saw one is even more dangerous salamander too but he is like more more dangerous look at this guy I mean can't you tell that he is very dangerous this is the enemy of Allah if how many enemies Allah has we need to kill you and uh, and if we kill you Allah will bless us with special deeds that's look at this guy look at this guy this this is this is very very suspicious one I think this is the one he is from the same family of the same idiot salamander who tried to kill the Prophet Abraham let us take his fingerprint I mean his tongue print <laughs> my friend Islam is Islam is lucky they have the prophet of wisdom and remember Muhammad wisdom the one you see right now is after Muhammad surgery because Allah he made a plastic surgery and he installed a dish of wisdom if you remember in his chest so Muhammad saying this after he got wise not before imagine before what he was saying you know this is after the wisdom surgery if after the wisdom surgery Muhammad he got this wisdom what Muhammad used to say before the wisdom surgery once I saw somebody he have in his house a salamander brother I'm telling you he have a salamander in his house you believe it he is feeding the enemy of Allah he is hosting the enemy of Allah brother he must be a kafir so according to Islam to make it simple salamander is a very 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 aggressive enemy to Allah and he should go you know what does that mean there's there's a hit there's a head there's a there's a contract in his head <laughs> imagine you are a salamander and yet you heard the news that there is a contract in your head <laughs> poor salamander and you know this poor this poor guy um uh, he have no idea what's happening like <laughs> uh, imagine you are a salamander and you wake up and you find yourself in the hands of Isis <laughs> please please <laughs> oh boy oh boy salamander day now let me read for you this story which is showing you more wisdom of the prophet the prophet by the way he is my best example of intelligence I you know always always when I read his words I feel stupid I don't feel he's stupid no 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 I don't mean that he I feel I am stupid because unbelievable unbelievable here the story Muhammad is telling about the story of Moses uh, hmm. according to Muhammad that Moses was making a sermon and he made everybody cry everybody <laughs> okay when he finished his sermon then a man come to Moses and ask oh Allah messenger 
Is there anyone on earth who is more learned than you? Oh boy. Oh boy, look at this, how embarrassing. Somebody is calling Christian Prince and saying to him, if there is anyone more knowledgeable than you about Islam, now Christian Prince, like he's proud, like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't think so. Look what Musa said. No. Like, what the heck? Did you notice how humble Musa's is? <laughs> no. No. Are you sure? No. <laughs> he replied, no. So Allah admonished him, Musa's. Allah right away. Hello? Yes. Hello, Habibi, Allah, Habibi. Hello, Habibi. Yes, this is Musa's from Jerusalem. Habibi, Allah, how are you? Yes, it is me, Musa, speaking to you. Jerusalem is doing good, and we are today fighting the Palestinians. Habibi Allah, what do you, how I can help you, Habibi? Do you want to borrow some money from our bank, Habibi? Do you want to buy some jewelry? Allah, anything you want, we are Jewish, and we are here to help. Yes, Allah, what do you want? You are angry from me? Habibi, because I told the man that I am the first, the most knowledgeable. Allah thought I am the most knowledgeable because we are the one who have satellite and we have nuclear weapon and the Arab have nothing. Don't you see the Arab? Are you saying to me, shut up? Okay, I'm going to shut up. So here, Musa, he, he, he thought he is the only knowledgeable man in earth. And Allah calling him now and he said to him, are you stupid or what? Are you stupid or what? What's wrong with you? So Allah admonished him. You can, I don't know if he spank him or do, I don't know. I have no idea what happened exactly. It says there he admonished him. For he did not ascribe all knowledge of Allah. Eesh. Allah is upset. When Allah said, forget about the rest. It was said on behalf of Allah. Yes, there is a slave of ours who knows more than you. Musa said, oh my Allah, Habibi Allah, Habibi. Oh my Allah, what are you talking about? Where I can find him? Is that Yasser Rafat? Are you telling me that this guy is a Yasser Arafat and he is an Arab and he knows more than me? This Jew, he is best off now. Especially when he learned that the guy is an Arab in Bahrain. Imagine you are a Jew and now Allah will send you to school to learn in the Arab school. I mean, that's really, that is, a, that is not only harassment, that is a sexual harassment. <laughs> Allah said, uh, Musa, he said to him, where I can't find, Habibi, uh, where I can't find this guy, so he's not knowledgeable than me. Where, where I can find him, you know? I mean, this Musa was like, what the heck? What's happening here? I thought I'm the most knowledgeable, and now there's uh, somebody, and he's in, where, where I can't find him? Huh? Oh, my Lord, oh, my Allah, where he is he? Allah said, in the junctions of the two seas. I mean, look at this. There's a two seas and there's a junction. Musa said, Oh my Allah, tell me of a sign whereby I will recognize his place. I mean, the story here is getting tense. It's aggressive. Then the story continue. Amr, Omar said to me that Allah said that a place be where the fish will leave you. What the heck? The fish will leave you? By the way, when I arrived to China, this trip, I did not recognize that this is Beijing Airport. The only way for me to find if it's Beijing Airport or not, I have a little tiny sardine fish in my back. I check it out, it was gone. And that was the sign of Allah. He told me, when you lose this fish, when the fish leave you, that means you are in Beijing. I mean, 
This is the GPS of Allah. You lose the fish. That's astonishing. That is something. I never thought that fish can do that. Fish, I thought we can eat it, etc. But to use it as a GBS, we take a fish with us. And when the fish, he did not even, you lose the fish. He said, you, when the fish leave you, because later the fish will leave. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, boy. Actually, in Arabic, it does not say fish. It says hoot, which means whale. Uh, anyway, Moses, he put the fish in the basket. And he go looking for this guy who is more knowledgeable than him. Then, after he have a he have a he took the fish with him, and he have a, ser a servant boy servant. The boy servant said to Moses, "I don't want to trouble you, except that you should inform me as soon as the fish leave you, if, 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 because Moses now waiting for the fish to leave." For this is the location of the GBS where he have to park his camel. He said, Moses, you have not uh, uh, demanded too much. The boy, he said, this is easy. Uh, anyway, <coughs> while they attended was in a shade of a rock, in a wet place. Do you see, guys, it says wet place? Do you see it says wet place? place is it clear <clears throat> oh boy we have a crazy storm here what's happening I hope we will not lose electricity the reason it says wet place uh, because this is where the fountain of life you heard many legions about something called the fountain of youth all right So this is where are the fountain of youth. The, the fish is dead. This is a this is a dead fish. You know, the, uh, they are not talking about a living fish. This is a dead fish. But now they put it in a wet place where there's a water coming from a fountain or a, or a spring of water. So when they put the fish in this wet place, yes, it is dead, but it came back to life, and the fish ran away. While Moses was sleeping, his attendant, he, and he said to himself, I will not wake him. But when he woke up, he forgot to tell him the fish has slipped out. Look at this disaster. The Moses is waiting for the time. <laughs> so Allah st stopped. Uh, uh, the fish went in the sea. The fish slipped out and entered the sea. Allah stopped the flow of the sea. What? 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 To be honest with you, those things happen to us Middle Eastern all the time in the Middle East. Me myself, once a fish slipped from me, and Allah stopped the flow of the sea, and look what happened. Where the fish was. So that it trace looked like it was made on a rock. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is a true story. That is a true story. By the way, this is explanation for the Quran. Don't think this is. Uh... I'm sure many of you is laughing, but you should not laugh, by the way, because those things are true stories. We Middle Eastern, let me tell you once. My, my, uh, my dad, he used to have a goat. The goat, she used to know how to swim very well. So we were worried that she is going to escape one day because she is very good in diving, swimming, and even she used to dive to collect jewelries and diamonds from the deep ocean. Like she go, she can go like 500 kilometer down the ocean. True story. So. Uh, in order to know where the goat is going to escape, if she escape, we put salt back in her back. So when the goat, she jump in the ocean, we trace the salt on the top of the water. And this is the true story. 
So Allah, He stopped the flow of the water. No, water froze. That's it. The fish is swimming. The water freeze. Wherever she goes, it's it's it's, it's like solid trace. That's it. It's a, like a rock. And forming a hole in his two. Uh, okay, what what what? Uh, so that a trace looked as it was made on a rock. Amr forming a hole with his two thumb uh, and index finger. Say it to me, like this. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like you, you make us like a circle, like you know, like this. You know, like this. So this guy is showing him the trace. Like this guy, he was there too, as in its trace was made in the rock. Musa said. We have suffered much fatigue on the journey of ours. Then they returned back and they found Al Khadr. And supposedly, this is how they found Al Khadr. Al Khadr, his name is Al Khadr because supposedly he drank from the water of the youth, the fountain of youth. Al Khadr means green. So this guy, because he drank from this uh, water, he lived forever. Al Khadr was in the time of Moses, and Al Khadr he attended the funeral of Muhammad, according to the Muslims. Al Khadr attended the funeral of Muhammad. He was exist in the time of Adam, which means like uh, at, uh, no, in the time of Noah. Sorry, in the time of Adam, almost now you know, in the time of Noah. So he met Noah, he met Moses, he met Muhammad, he was in his funeral, and until now he is alive for a very simple reason, for he drank from the fountain of youth. Now, obviously, this is a true story, and nobody can really, I mean, you cannot deny this. Right? You cannot. And the funny that this guy, <coughs> Al Khadr, he covered himself when he sat alone by a garment and he covered his head, his face, his feet. Anyone knows why? <coughs> Anyone knows why he covered himself like this? Who knows? Now, don't give me a word like that word there about haramophobia, whatever it is. Give me a word I can read, man. Is that no. <laughs> Because he is trying to hide, you see, his garment, his garment is green. And he was in the grass, which is green, because whatever he touched, it turned green too. And this way, he can hide himself. So if you look from far away, you will not notice that this is Al-Khadr. You will see a green rock. Because many people, they are seeking him from everywhere. For he is a great, you know, it's like a Christian prince, as, as, as an example, if you know him, Christian prince, you know. It's like, you know, people come from everywhere, from Indonesia, from Pakistan, from even in India to listen to Christian prince. This is Al-Khadr. And this is what I do, actually. Sometimes when I don't want people to see me, I cover myself with a green blanket. And I sit in a wet place. <clears throat> I mean, don't you notice here there's a lot of wisdom? Look, Uthman ibn Abi Suleiman said he found him on a green carpet. Oh boy, green carpet in the middle of the sea. Oof. A carpet. <laughs> oh boy, I hate myself. You're asking yourself why the Muslims hate you. I mean, you are showing how stupid this religion is. They will kill you, man. In the middle of a car, this guy is sitting on the top of a green carpet in the middle of the sea.
Sim, 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 sim. <coughs> see, in Islam, you have a flying car that can fly. We have a flying car that can swim. <laughs> Oh, uh, true story. I mean, this is really true story. I feel like I'm gonna say Shahada. That's too much. Okay, should we shall we continue or we continue tomorrow? <laughs> I think we should continue tomorrow. <laughs> Muslims, this is too much, man. I mean, what's wrong? How your prophet knows all of this? That's amazing. How this happened? <clears throat> you know, Tamara, why you are saying to me, continue CB? Are you my mother in law? I obey only my mother in law, and I am single. <laughs> that makes sense. You are single, you have mother in law. So we have a green carpet, brother, in the middle of the sea. And Al Khadr in the middle of the sea, he was there. Now, the question is how Musa was able to walk to the middle of the sea? <laughs> oh, oh boy. Now, anyone notice how he was walking all the way to the middle of the sea? He walked. On the trace of the fish, you remember? Hello, wake up! Allah, he froze. He make like he make it like a rock. He forgot. He make the trace of the sea of the of the fish like a rock. So Musa do not need a boat. Yes, he is in the middle of the sea, but the fish was swimming to where? Was swimming to Al Khadr. For he is the source of life. You know, the fish did not go anywhere in the sea. She's going directly to Al Khadr. For this is a fish serving Allah. This is a Muslim fish. This is not just a fish. So the fish keep going all the way to Al Khadr, and Musa says he was walking now on the water. Until he arrived in the middle of the sea. I mean, guys, let me open Google. When we say the middle of the sea, what is that exactly? <laughs> oh, believable, man. In the middle of the sea. <clears throat> where is where is uh, where is Google? Where is Google? I want to show you when you see people don't know what we are talking about. This is astonishing. This is beyond imagination. This is too much. All right. Hold on. So let us. <laughs> I hate what I do. So Moses, this is like how many how many thousand kilometers? <laughs> so Moses, we, we have a caller. All right. Hello. Hello. Yes, my friend. How are you? ACP. Uh, your voice is low. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Really, I can tell now. The voice is something wrong with it. Let us see why. Uh, Hold on, let me see if I can adjust the volume on my computer or something. No, I think from here. For some reason, guys, do you hear me? Do you hear me there? And no. okay, I think because I have many applications open. Do you hear me now? Better? Yeah. I think now internet. So, so in my case, I'll right back. Okay. You know what? I, I let let me hang up in Sky first. Maybe it's, that will make the internet work better. Don't don't call me right now. <clears throat>
uh, obviously because I opened Google that put more pressure in my uh, uh, internet. So uh, Al Khadr is here in the middle of the sea, here. And now Musa's have to walk only from here, 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 to here. I mean, this is a very small distance. The middle of the C statement, what does that mean? Let us go to tools. Uh, tools. Uh, where is it? Tools. Okay. By kilometers or miles. <clears throat> it has put kilometers for from here actually it's will accept from here to here that will make it only only kilometer says let us change it to a mile let us see how many miles that 13 miles Look that distance four thousand uh, six thousand four hundred sixty uh, seventy six kilometers something water of the ocean walking on the water which became like a rock. Now, how in the world you people don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad as a prophet until now? What's wrong with you? My sound is breaking. Okay, hold on, hold on. I have, I think I need to close uh, Google. My internet is not doing good. Okay, do you hear me better now? <clears throat> is my voice better? Yeah, I think too many applications and my speed is not enough good, uh, good enough for this. Uh, anyway. So uh, we calculate then the, the uh, how uh, when he say in the middle of the sea, uh, the average of the, the distance Musa as he walk on the water on the top of the water is only six thousand kilometer, only. So Allah, He made the trace of the fish, the fish to swim for six thousand kilometers. I'm not going to ask for how long the trip was. I'm not going to ask how the fish went to Al Khadr or this instant without even going to different location. I'm not going to ask how Allah made the water have a trace or how the water became like a rock. <clears throat> what I'm going to ask for why, for God's sake, Musa's in the middle of the sea? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Do you think that Allah He ordered him to stay there? <clears throat> Do you think this is the Allah? It's Allah, obviously it's Allah. I mean, this guy he chose the best location, man, in the middle of the sea. Nobody will talk to him. <laughs> and the carpet is a green, and he is covering himself. Maybe because he's afraid to get suntan. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, this is too much. This is too much. This is so beautiful. This is so so beautiful. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, uh, sorry, my friend, call. You know, you wanna call me? Uh, I get to go. It's uh, I just noticed the time is seven thirty, and there's something I need to do. Uh, I hope today we have a good time. Uh, tomorrow we will continue with the story of the fish. You see, we we cut the story. I'm not going to cut it for you. No way. This is getting more exciting. Now we remember. Take a note. We stop where the Prophet Al Khadr he put his carpet in the middle of the sea, and this is where he live. This guy he live in the middle in, of the sea in the top of a carpet, not an island. 
like what Muhammad will lose if he make it an island I mean make it like like a 50 by 50 meter island at least a carpet can't you unbelievable unbelievable all right anyway guys I got to go now I am uh, glad to see you and for those who they are celebrating the Easter I say to you uh, our Lord is a living Lord and he is the Alpha and the Omega and he is not only resurrected he is the resurrector uh, all the stories we are showing you is not to make fun of anyone but to show the stupidity of someone claiming to be a prophet and how a human being can be deceived after all those stupid stories in the front of their eyes still they believe in this liar how someone can leave someone like Jesus the perfect the amazing the loving the giving the one even their book says he can create from the mother bird the one who can heal you we are following a healer they are following a scammer a fairy tale teller there is no way to compare between who we follow and who they follow thank you for being with us tomorrow be with us again between 4 and 4 30 i will start my broadcast and maybe earlier until i see you then again may the lord bless you christ is lord islam is false and we'll see you soon again thank you very much